here first, and then we'll see if we can uh, double back and get a, a correct answer. Uh, Jamie Foxx is ready to turn tragedy into comedy. The Oscar-winning actor and comedian uh, revealed at the African American Film Critics Association Awards luncheon on Sunday he plans to share details about his mysterious health scare in his stand-up. He said, everybody wants to know what happened, and I'm going to tell you what happened, but I got to do it my way. I'm going to do it in a funny way. I have to be honest, I am massively interested in how this is going to be presented. Yeah. Because... You look at him now, and you look at him on his uh, game show. He returned to his, uh, you know, uh, Shazam. Shazam show and other stuff. It's it's like nothing ever happened. Really? And yet we knew he was teetering on death. Uh, so he indicated that he would share the details on stage after returning to his stand-up roots. He was hospitalized last year, of course, after experiencing what his family described as a medical complication. He never provided details about what led to the hospitalization, but he has since stepped back into the public eye. At the African American Film Critics Association, if any revealed, uh, received the Producers Award. And in his speech, he said that he was grateful to have people in his life that, quote, really made sure that I was here after he was in dire straits. He also teased a return uh, to the stage last week, sharing an old clip of his stand-up on Instagram and telling fans that he's planning on bringing more moments like those, going to get on somebody's stage somewhere near you. And he is also set to return uh, to television on uh, Monday. He said that he will be back as host and executive producer uh, for the game show Beat Shazam. And that is returning for its seventh season on May 28th. Uh, Nick Cannon filled in for him following the medical scare. So he's going to take a run at it again. So at the time he was doing uh, th this, uh, this medical scare occurred, he was reportedly in training to play Mike Tyson. And uh, and then obviously the place that he ended up in was known for strokes, but there has been no confirmation of that yeah. whatsoever. So uh, I'm curious to see what he finally reveals. All right, we're going to see if someone does know the answer to our stupid question: What is the offspring of a male horse and a female donkey called? And we will go to Riley. Hi, Riley. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, is it a is it a henny? A henny is correct. Oh! Yes. Oh! H-I-N-N-Y. Never heard of that. Hang on just a second, bud. Hey! We are going to give you Jimmy. Uh, We're going to give you a four-pack of tickets Jimmy. for the Jimmy. for the 20, 25th annual uh, Greater Philadelphia Boat Show, March 15th through the 17th at the Expo Center at Oaks. You can visit phillyboatshow.com for details and ask for Henny while you're Jimmy. there. Jimmy! Yeah. Henny! Apparently, a female donkey is called a Jenny. Which I didn't know. Jenny. And a uh, horse, obviously, is a stallion. So it's uh, a horse plus a Jenny oh. equals a Henny. Okay. Bye-bye, uh, nice. Jenny. <laughs> Hello, Henny. Jimmy. I think, the, bye I, bye think Jenny. I think I just had sex with a horse. <laughs> oh, a lady earlier that God. said uh, <laughs> Zorse, I think that's a zebra and a horse. Ah. Yes, actually, that's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's a thing. Yeah. It's an actual thing. Hey, Kate Middleton has been seen publicly for the first time since December. Uh, the Princess of Wales, who <laughs> underwent a planned... Uh, abdominal surgery back in January was photographed on Monday riding in a car with her mother, Carol Middleton. The picture arrives just days after Kensington Palace shut down rumors about the princess's whereabouts following increased speculation on the internet. So it's cool. She did that old viral thing. Uh, she's riding with her mother and she was in the passenger seat and she jumped out and was running alongside the car, Preston. Oh, okay. I love that. It, it was so cool. Uh, what do they used to call that? What was that? Go ghost riding? I forgot what, what that was, was that? called. Well, that's if you were... If you were driving and got out, yeah, right. Nobody the in the car. When the passenger got out, what do they call that? I don't know. Do remember. they get back into their own seat? Because yeah. the other one was a Chinese fire drill. Right. right. Huh. Uh, that was where everybody switches seats. Yeah. And, and yet, and Azores is sitting in the back seat. But yeah. what was that thing where the, where the driver got out and, you know, I, it was just these things, these know, fads come and go. Come and go and, all right. Anyway, doesn't Kate, matter. Kate Middleton <laughs> revived Planking. It. There you go. Planking. <laughs> Uh, the palace previously announced the timeline for Kate's recovery in a statement announcing uh, the Royals' operation on January 16th. So this is interesting. Steve sent me this article. This is pretty cool. Mark Ruffalo, up for Best Supporting Actor against some of Hollywood's biggest names at the Academy Awards this Sunday, but last week... He was hanging out in Delaware County. Yes, oh, he yeah. was. He yeah. was in Delco. Yeah. And uh, from this story, which uh, I think is from the Inquirer, yep. when uh, Marple resident Mike Gentile stopped for oh. lunch at a, the, a cut above deli in no. Newtown Square. <laughs> Dude, are um, you kidding me? That's no. Like two miles from my house. On the Wednesday. Best chicken nuggets out there. <laughs> also, not for nothing, their hot roast beef is like <laughs> damn good. Listen, well, uh, I, clearly I, Ruffalo heard. The. 
Nick shows beef gets all the uh, yeah. Um, it gets all the attention around here. Cut above's hot roast beef. I think it's better. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. You going on record? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, this guy, Mike, happened to be uh, steps away from his Marvel hero, Bruce Banner, the Hulk, in uh, the modest store along Westchester Pike. Uh, chatter was swirling that Brad Inglesby's follow-up to Mayor of Easttown, a crime show called Task, set in the Philadelphia area, was filming locally. Uh, but this guy, Mike, had no clue that uh, Ruffalo, fresh off the Oscar-nominated performance for Poor Things, was starring in the forthcoming HBO series. So he chatted with him for a little bit. And he said the conversation was awesome. Yeah. Uh, the series, by the way, follows a task force of law enforcement officers and the criminals they are trying to apprehend. Uh, filming was underway in Ridley Township over the weekend at Our Lady of Peace School on Millmont Avenue. I Casey? Yeah, I Come on. Casey? Listen, what? That's, that's the parish right next to where I grew up. That's uh, I was well, Best PA. falafels in town. Yeah. <laughs> Case, so this is all around your haunt. Keep I know. your radar up. I, yeah. Listen, I, I, I saw, I, I didn't know about a cut above, but I saw this and I'm like, I need to be in this show. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, I, know, I know Brad Inglesby. You do. We've had yeah. him on the show. We've not yeah. had him in studio. Uh, let's get him back on and uh, force him into putting you on the show publicly. Force yes. him. I mean, yeah. Physically. Force him. Yeah. Blackmail him. Yeah. I'll take his physically. Uh, <laughs> Ruffalo said... I want to roll on a show. Yeah, your character be called, can yeah. be called Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. By myself, I'll take his physically. He's my brother, Crummy. Yeah. Uh, Ruffalo said in a January interview that he plays the head of an FBI unit that's badly damaged but fighting for good. It's unknown whether Kate Winslet would reappear as Mayor Sheehan. I hope she does. Uh, Ruffalo's comments left the possibility open-ended. And uh, he is no stranger to Philadelphia. He uh, joined... Local high school students in Sheltonham in 2016 for an educational trip in the Delaware River watershed. Ruffalo is the founder of a water defense group that opposes natural gas drilling. Uh, in April, he endorsed former councilwoman Helen Gim, or is it Jim, uh, during it's her Jimmy, uh, <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. in her campaign Jimmy. for mayor. By the way, so. Uh, we will be seeing Water. him in and around the area more often. I think that'd be great. I mean, you remember how exciting it was when Kate Winslet was in the area? Yeah. She would, I, I hope she's back. I loved, we, I think we all love Mayor of It was great. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, It was wonderful. So, uh, let's see. Turns out that Taylor Swift was spot on naming her forthcoming album The Tortured Poets Department. Uh, the company, Ancestry, which of course helps people trace their genealogy, has found evidence swift is distantly related to the famed poet emily dickinson is that crazy a post on the ancestry instagram account reads renowned american poets taylor swift and emily dickinson are sixth cousins three times removed she also found out that her great grandfather is fred rerun barry oh my yes. god huh. I thought there was a resemblance. Just, he just knew her dance moves were so fly. Uh, Dickinson, who lived from 1830 to 1886, is known for her poems such as Because I Could Not Stop for Death and Hope is the Thing with Feathers. And there was an old hermit named Dave, the, which is one of her famous. Uh, the writer, who should have been a celebrity in her own time, even wrote about fame like her distant cousin. Uh, she wrote, uh, Success is counted sweetest. By those who neared succeed, to comprehend a nectar requires sorest need. Mm. Uh, it was in her poem, Success is Counted. Because a player is going to engage in playing, playing, playing. <laughs> uh, Swift and Dickinson both descended from a 17th century English immigrant, Swift's ninth great-grandfather and Dickinson's sixth great-grandfather, who was an early settler of Windsor, Connecticut. Do you have any desire? I, we talk about this all the time. I flirt with the notion. I also know that, that you can go down a, a path that might lead you to stuff you don't want to know. But uh, when my dad recorded information about the history of our family, you know, before he passed, uh, I was like, oh, maybe I do want to have, you know, check on the history of the family. Would you ever do that? I did it. Oh, how extensive back, how, does it I, go? I went back and it, it's, to be honest, it's not that crazy interesting to it me isn't. personally. No, no. I, yeah, it's weird. Uh, but I'm, I'm one of those who's just kind of... No, yeah. I'm just kind of living my own life. You're right. Uh, like, you know, we didn't really name any of our kids after anybody in the family. And, like uh, Jebediah. Screw them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Screw them all. F yeah. you. Uh, no, I just, uh, and, and you know what? You start to get notifications of you have so and so relatives who live in this general area and they're, you know, uh, second cousins uh, twice removed, third cousins twice removed. And I'm like, I don't know these people. How, they don't know any of the people I know. I, no. How far back did it go? 
Uh, in other words, you're doing a history, a family, I an ancestry know. search. Okay, I, you can. It goes way back. Yeah, you can take it way back. Yeah, but I, um, I, it, it just, it's not that interesting to me. Okay, some no. people are, some people are way into it. I mean, my uncle was way into it, and he tried to explain it to me, and I just, I don't know. I'm a heartless son of a bitch. I think, I, I, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I understand where you're coming from. I think yeah. I turned around a little bit on it, as as death. Follows me every second of the day. <laughs> I think that uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit more interested in it. Yep. So uh, yeah, she and uh, she and Taylor Swift are somehow or another slightly related. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jimmy. That guy's happy. Uh, Lily Gladstone, the favorite to win Best Actress of the Oscars for Killers of the Flower Moon, expressed her desire to host Saturday Night Live in a new interview. She should. She said, that's been probably a dream that I've held on my own. She's pretty funny. I've seen, I've seen her in interviews. She's got a good sense of humor. She said, it's like my parents, and I think it's uh, just what people say when you have an aspiration to act and they want to encourage you as a kid. It's like, oh, you'll get an Oscar one day. So it's almost it almost just becomes a platitude, she any, said. Any of you guys watched the movie yet? Not yet. I, I, I did. I've tried. I, I'm trying to I, get through it. I did watch it. It is good. I think uh, one and done. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's one of those cases. And I love Scorsese. God, I love him. One of my, we all do. Fantastic director. But like with The Irishman, you could peel some time off that and still get your story across. Yeah. Uh, Shannon, but the thing I've always wanted to do if I've had a moment is to host SNL. If I've had this moment to host SNL, uh, uh, SNL uh, the show has uh, never had an indigenous host in its history, making Gladstone a fitting choice. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. How about this? Um, 21 years and counting had to pass for a Freaky Friday sequel to come to fruition. And Lindsay Lohan confirmed that there is a sequel for the iconic 2003 film being worked on, though she refused to get into details about when it will come. I said, I didn't want to. I don't want to say too much. We're both excited. I'm going to speak for Jamie, she said. Uh, last May, The Hollywood Reporter confirmed that a sequel was officially in development with a script in the works with Curtis and Lowen expected to return to their roles as Anna and Tess Coleman, respectively, after 20 years. And now that version of Freaky Friday was a remake of an original. Right? Yeah, they did two other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Freaky Friday was uh, based on Mary Rogers' 1972 novel of the same name. Had already been adapted twice before Curtis and Lowen stepped into the mother daughter roles. In 1976, the adaptation starred Barbara Harris and Jodie Foster. And the 1995 version starred Shelley Long and Gabby Hoffman. Looks like she did a bit on uh, Fallon last night, Preston, where uh, she plays twins. She plays herself twice, and uh, they're sharing some Oreos. And uh, anyway, they're, they're having a little tongue in cheek fun with this. Well, whole that, concept. that's a riff on um, Parent Trap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, different that's not movie. what we're talking about? Uh-uh. No, that we're talking <laughs> about Freaky Friday. Oh, okay. <laughs> I the same but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's all Freaky all Friday's movie. a body swap hey, one. Oh, all right. Crap. Yeah, where she and... I honestly and, thought you were... That's the same man movie. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, she and Jamie Lee Curtis switch uh, consciousness. Uh, Parent and, Trap is where uh, the parents divorce and then they split assets, including their children. I see. You know. Yeah. yeah. Very believable. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, she does a great job um, playing multiple... Like in, in, uh, in um, the uh, Parent Trap. She does a great job playing convincingly Agreed. two different people. Yeah. And it's a great thing job. in, in uh, Freaky, Friday. Freaky Friday. She was really Very good because she was, you know, like a teenager, 19 or something like that. And she was pulling off the adult, man, you know, yeah. uh, affectations of, of Jamie Lee Curtis. I thought it was a really well done movie. And you got to imagine that's tough to do that. Yeah. So we'll see. I have No timeline on this as of yet, but apparently it's, it's a go. So we'll see. Uh, Baywatch is getting a new TV reboot yeah! on Fox. Yeah! After the 2017 movie flop, it says here, uh, the Lifeguard franchise is going back to its roots with a new series. The show will feature a new generation of Baywatch lifeguards navigating action-packed rescues and complicated personal lives. And pushing the boundaries of believability. Uh, the reboot will also bring back the iconic red bathing suits and sandy beaches that fans love. So if they go full exploitative, they'll probably succeed. But if they try to go, like, deep and make it a, a more powerful Baywatch, right. it won't work. Laura Olson, known for reviving 80s and 90s uh, TV series 90210 and Beauty and the Beast for the CW, is on board as a showrunner. No word yet if the original series stars like David Hasselhoff or Pamela Anderson will be involved or not. You know, Jason Momoa came out of Baywatch Hawaii, which was a, a sequel series that a lot of people don't remember. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. I, I just saw a picture, speaking of Jason Momoa and Hawaii, yeah. I just saw a picture of him uh, wearing, I don't know, it uh, looked like a... Uh, 
Loincloth? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, he looked a little pudgy. Oh, yeah. Jason he, Momoa. He, 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 he's actually more... Um, does he go up and down? He does. Okay. He does. I mean, even at uh, even at P- Pudgy Momoa is something we would all strive yes. for. Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, doubling back to Lindsay for a moment, even though she's not in this, but uh, Mean Girls, the musical, uh, will stream on Paramount Plus beginning March 5th, uh, following its January theatrical release. An adaptation of the Broadway musical surpassed the $100 million mark at the global box office after six weeks of release, and it held the top spot at the domestic box office for three consecutive weeks following its January 12th release. Did any of you see it? No, I did I, not. I yeah. saw the actual mm-hmm. musical, Yeah, uh, but I didn't see the movie. They say this is, uh, a, this is not an exact redo of the stage musical. Uh, my youngest didn't care for it, Yeah, and which is too bad, uh, but I uh, was expecting... More positive things from that, but uh, what 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 about the percent? What does she think of the uh, uh, of the original Tina Fey? I think, um, the movie. That's the, a good Lin- question. Lindsay Lohan. I don't know. Yeah, I bet you. I think that would play better to a lot of um, of um, kids or yeah. people in this age range. Uh, mean Girls was originally slated to debut direct uh, directly on Paramount Plus. However, executives decided on a theatrical release after enthusiastic test screenings. <laughs> All right, hope you're not barbied out yet because a live to film. <laughs> Concert experience called Barbie the Movie in Concert is headed to a city Come near on. you. Uh, but it's one of those where they play it on the screen and the orchestra oh, plays live. all right, yeah. all right. So the Live uh, Live Nation and Overture Global Entertainment are producing the experience that will bring the uh, pictures feature film to life with live music from the Barbie Land Sinfonietta. So the record-smashing film will be projected onto a giant LED screen above the Barbie Land Sinfonietta as they perform the film's Award-winning score. Fans of all ages can celebrate the music to the highest-grossing film, one-of-kind immersive experience, and they'll have limited edition merchandise, photo opportunities, and more. So it's set to kick off in Florida, uh, in Tampa, and the executive producer of a Macy, uh, producer Macy Schmidt's All Women Orchestra will travel to 37 cities. And uh, the closest I saw is uh, Burgettstown, PA. Oh, that's by like Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's... It, oh, re- my God, Jing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah. uh, and then Holmdel, New Jersey. Those are the only right. Pennsylvania, well, Jersey locations. I'm not so it's going to be worth the drive. They'll probably, <laughs> maybe announce something down the road. You never uh, know around our area. So, what about like the the Dua Lipa song and the uh, Billie Eilish songs? Are they in the presentation as know. well? Or is it just the actual music from the movie? That's a good question. God damn it! God damn it! Uh, this one right here says Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. Oh. Then the date must have been left off on uh-huh. the uh-huh. Saturday, July the 6th. All right. Well, there you go. I still want to go to near Pittsburgh. I think that's the way yeah, I want to see Yeah, it. don't I you? You want to drive five hours? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a concert out there once. Uh, nice, um, venue? Nice, con- nice concert venue. Yeah, they had like camping that was uh, really close to it. Uh, poop oh, nice for everyone. Poop nice for everyone. Poop <laughs> knives all around. I was on the PA Turnpike a lot this week. Uh, turnpike a lot this weekend. And uh, if you ever get a chance, I cannot recommend Breezewood PA more highly because uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what <laughs> just little slice of America. Breezewood. What, what makes it such a great little hamlet? You know, Steve. I think they cram every truck uh, in the country into that town <laughs> when you're trying to drive through it. <laughs> Breezewood. Breezewood. Breezewood PA, yeah. Right, right off the turnpike Preston before you get to Pittsburgh and uh, boy is that delightful. If you love the smell of diesel and some good hearted people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to play the clips now. Good Trouble. The drama about strangers living together in a communal space in Los Angeles is coming to an end. No! I've never heard of it. Uh, The show touched on lots of issues facing young adults in post-COVID world and here, comedian Sherry Cola talks about the uh, platform that the show gave her. My conversation around queerness, um, representing for the Asian community, I'm just liberated in my own skin because the show gave me a voice. It's not funny! Uh, the series finale of Good Trouble airs tonight, and you'll find that on Freeform. Here's our next clip. In Kung Fu Panda 4, Poe searches for his successor as the new Dragon Warrior while fighting a new shape-shifting foe. And in this clip, Jack Black talks about what makes Poe so lovable. His innocence, just his sweet, sort of childish obsession with kung fu and action figures and these toys of childhood. I could relate to that because, you know, I had a very powerful, uh, creative sort of imagination when I was a kid and easily able to tap into that part of my memory banks. And that's a fun thing to play. 
childish enthusiasm. What's your name, fat body? Kung Fu Panda 4 opens on Friday, by the way. I enjoyed the first two. Yeah. So the first two. And the, the third, I did not. Yeah. Um, but they're back for a fourth. I remember the first one. Uh, yeah. but, but after that, they kind of bleed together, so... Uh, but anyhow, there you go. Movies and actors and all kinds of things going on for you, friend. All right, we will take a break. Come back in a moment. Don't forget actor Dana Roebuck joining us later on this morning. We also have a Tattoo Tuesday, so text word Tattoo to 39333. Might win that from Floating World Tattoo in Paris. Before the show is up, $350 gift certificate. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, next Thursday, no, that's this Thursday. But it's looking good. Next Thursday looks like uh, partly cloudy and 78 degrees. Yeah. Hey. Not here in in, yeah, uh, yeah. in Clearwater. I know. Partly cloudy. But you could come down. 78 degrees, yes. And right? Friday looks exactly the same. Come down well. and hang with us. So please do. We're going to be at Coco's on Friday, and that's where you're invited to, uh, to join us. Coco. So. Um, yesterday, uh, to not a great surprise, but, uh, Jason Kelsey announced his retirement. Uh, he had a press conference. Um, he sat down and spoke for 45 minutes announcing his retirement. And I was thinking about, like, it would take me like two seconds. Uh, out of here. Yes. (laughs) Uh, no, I think, listen, we actually, we got a chance. The closest I think that we've had to something like this, and it wasn't a retirement, but the induction into the Radio Hall yeah, of Fame. We kind of take a, how long was yours? A, like a minute and a half, two minutes? Yeah, tops. Yeah. 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 Same with me. We've learned we, to we, keep it short. Keep it short. Yeah, yeah that's what you want to do. Uh, but here is a, a career, and uh, it, uh, I watched the whole thing. It, it, it moved very, I thought it was really pitch yeah. perfect. It was lovely. It was really, um, uh, you know, uh, th- th- this guy, Jason Kelsey, will be. Complete royalty in this city forever. Forever. You posed the question yesterday, yeah. Steve, and I think it's fair and worth actually throwing out to our audience. Could, is he, or if there is someone else, who is the most beloved sports figure in Philadelphia history? Who? In, in recent memory, at least, anyway, because yeah. there may be people who have uh, died who knew, uh, you know, who had... Uh, Gurf Tarkelson! Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, the players um, we've never heard of before. I, I think it's hands down Jason Kelsey. Hands down. I think it's hands down, and I think he he really cemented that just with his uh, Super Bowl speech alone. Okay. I think that's, you know, that really, you know, put him on the... Uh, right. Uh, you know, on on, on the on marquee the, there, the forever map. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know the the years since then, uh, it, in the documentary, you know, I I, I don't recall because you're, you're 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 living in a storied sports city. When you go to an Eagles game, the amount of Jason Kelsey jerseys you <laughs> rarely see an offensive lineman jersey at a stadium. Like the the only ones you'll see less than an offensive lineman jersey is a kicker's jersey. Okay. And uh, and the the amount of Jason Kelsey jerseys you see at a game or just you know at, out and about is um it's Indicative. mind blowing yeah. Okay. yeah yeah I mean honestly probably the most beloved center in the history of uh, football um, also it doesn't hurt that he played an entire career here his whole professional career one team one city yeah uh, and uh, just scrolling through social media yesterday afternoon and last night and Steve I watched the whole thing too I found it to be moving and uh, and, and heartfelt and Beautiful. genuine. Um, every social media post that I saw last night had something to do with Jason Kelsey for all my friends locally. I mean, anybody that ever met him said kind things. We've been lucky enough to meet him a couple times. Like, he's just, a, he's a good dude. Uh, yeah, so, who, okay, so then, well, do you I'll... believe Kelsey is the most revered sports figure? You know, everybody in this town gets crapped on at one point or another, right? right? right. It's every athlete, um, uh, including Mike Schmidt, who's probably yeah. the greatest Philly of all time. Um, so I would put him up there with Mike Schmidt, Dr. J, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. J, Dr. J, but Man. Dr. J didn't even play his entire career. Yeah. I mean, no. he played for the Nets for a stretch. So I, I, listen, in modern history, it's Kelsey. Well, okay. And that adds to it too, that he played here for his entire career, because yeah. a lot of times at the end of their career, you know, they'll try to extend it a year or two, like he did. And they end up on a different team and you know, that's right. okay. But right. the fact that he was here his entire career and retired here and he is the guy he is. He's up there. Is yeah. that what did Dornbos in from being the greatest of all yeah, time? No. And then he, he at the end was trying to go to another team, and then of course they found the medical thing. Yeah, no, and then um, I, you know, I think prior to Jason Kelsey, it would have been like Brian Dawkins. 
Brian Dawkins was uh, beloved, and even though he ended up uh, playing for the Broncos for a stretch, uh, I think he was he was up there. And and for a lot of people, Dawkins will still be that person. Most but... beloved sports figure in Philadelphia. Uh, okay. All right. mo- I'm, talk- I'm talking about all sports. Nah, of nah, all nah, sports. Because yeah, yeah, most- yeah. you guys, I think, I'm going I'm to key off you, but I'm like, that is a that is a loaded question because, again, I didn't even, Dr. J, you know, I'm like, Okay, wow. It's pretty wild because uh, Nick Foles is up there as well because he was the quarterback that won yeah. the Super Bowl. But, uh, no, I, I th- and you're going to say sports figure. It, t- it's Jason Kelsey. Okay. Well, listen, and, and I hope that he is. I yes. Ho- I hope it is because we all feel like it is. But it's, I think, too, it's a lot, a lot has to do with that it's here, it's now. So think about, yeah. you know, like we're talking about Dr. J and people that played years ago. 20 years from now. Are we still going to feel that way? And I hope so. Probably. But that's yeah. That Hang would be on. the question. Uh, uh, Chris wants to add a name. Hey, uh, Chris. Good morning. Hey, resist we much. <laughs> resist <laughs> we much. We much. Al Sharpton. I love it. What's up, hey, Chris? It's a classic. Good morning, guys. <laughs> I, I was thinking about this. It's a great question. I think of Allen Iverson, the guy. There was so much baggage off the court, legal stuff, the PR side of things, showing up late to games sitting out fan appreciation nights, but what really matters to Philadelphia fans is when it matters most, when you are on the court, are you giving it all? Are you throwing your body around? Right. The risk of winning is so much greater than everything else, and that's what endears him to people. Yeah, but when you go through his laundry list of stuff, you're like, yeah, Jason Kelsey didn't have any of that stuff. Well, that's what he's saying. Yeah, Yeah, that's what he's saying. So so what, what, what matters more then, Chris, as you're saying, you have the full package with Kelsey. Um, so, uh, um, so if you compare both, and again, I'm talking straight out of my ass on this, yeah. but if you talk at a level of performance, Allen Iverson mm-hmm. versus Kelsey. I- Iverson's not even in my top five. Okay. I mean, it would be Kelsey, Dawkins, Schmidt, Dr. J, um, and I have to think about uh, who uh, would else would go before Allen I mean, Iverson. Iverson brought some of the most exciting sports moments, you, right. you can, if you view it that way. Yeah. So, um, and so but when what, you think about the baggage, you're like, mm, no, Kelsey's a much better guy. <laughs> yeah. He said hi to me at Friday's once. I think so the, there you go. the Gate brothers from uh, the Wings lacrosse team <laughs> back in the day. Those that's guys. your five? Yeah, that's Is my that five. five. Yeah. That's your five. Yeah. Dallas Elliott? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I, it. It depends on how you quantify it. What what makes great, you know, uh, yeah. is it uh, the, your superstar, your stats, the nature of the fact that you're a champion, you're a winner, that, uh, or is it uh, a combination of both? You're a great player, you're a great person. Uh, you you brought you you brought a spotlight to the city as well in a positive way. When you were in St. Louis, uh, who who at, at the time obviously oh, Brett Hull, yeah, right. Brett Hull was Smith. a giant. Uh, well, Ozzy Smith was the ultimate. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Casey. Ozzy Smith was the he w- he would be considered the greatest. I was a huge hockey fan, but I mean, not that I wasn't a baseball fan, but Ozzy Smith was the god of sports, without question. Hmm. You know? And and he was he was known to be a good person and also an incredible player, probably the best shortstop ever. I just wonder if Jason Kelsey played for a different team, even let's say another NFC East team, if I would love him as much, or the, because the, the, the purity of the one team deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because no, no. I just mean if he didn't end up in Philadelphia, oh, I got, see. If he okay. got drafted by right. another team, if no I way would, in hell. Uh, no way in hell would right? you love him as because, much. <laughs> not remotely. Because uh, there were there were national media posts yeah, on sure. on Instagram last night, and I went. I was like, let me see what the <laughs> country thinks about uh, Jason but, Kelsey, and I couldn't stand the comment section. <laughs> I was like, you guys, and and you oh, know really? what? It made me hate every other city <laughs> that much. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why uh-huh. it was—it's the perfect recipe for Kelsey. Mm-hmm. Him, him coming here. He, he wasn't you know, first round draft pick, number one overall, or whatever. He was—he was a gritty dude. who was an offensive lineman guy. It wasn't some you know shiny quarterback coming out of Notre Dame or right. whatever. He's—he's he's a Cleveland dude who moved here, who played not for a marquee college program for Cincinnati. Like everything that led to to Kelsey's retirement yesterday. Puts him up on that pedestal. Well, puts him up on the mat more, on the rush more. I think you're right, Nick. Do we have that clip, Preston, of of, of the, the the match that is Philadelphia that that when he was told earlier, you played it earlier in the news. I, it, I mean, stuff like this is what you carve into the stone when you're doing the statue of someone. You know, you immediately after being drafted, my agent Jason Bernstein said, "You have no idea how perfect this is. You are going to fit in great." Come on. You, 
You're going to fit in great in Philadelphia. This is your kind of town. There you go. Mm, I yeah. will say that uh, we were pretty early on recognizing what a special individual, individual he was outside of, you know, the, the what yeah. happened on the field. On yeah. the gridiron. On the, on the gridiron warrior. Yeah, we, just we had, the President Steve show? Yeah, we had him on uh, as a guest on our show a number of times. And he was and always then, great. And he was always great. And then when he had that Super Bowl speech... It was like, oh, yeah. We had, you know, we had the first interview. And we had him on, like, not the next, I guess that following Monday. It was yeah. after the parade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was after yeah. the parade. We got the first interview. It was great. Some uh, clips were posted on our social media about that uh, yesterday. I it was love, awesome. I love uh, Eric Lindros. A lot of people are, are naming him. You know, I, I would put him yeah. as probably my favorite flyer of all time. People are saying Bobby Clark, too. But but both of those guys came with baggage. Like, when you think about Kelsey, there's just so little of it. And, uh, and also, on top of all of it, Kelsey was really vocal. So you saw him out and yeah. about. You heard his speeches, um, and you got to know him as a, you know as a player, but also as a person. You see his marriage. You see his kids. Like he's very, very public, and that allows us to love him that much more. Mm. Yeah, and and he also has, an, and not to this degree, but uh, I remember um, uh, uh, Billy Crystal talking about because he was the uh, the biggest. Um, uh, oh my Mickey god, Mantle. Mickey Mantle fan, right? And he would say, and Mickey Mantle came with a lot of bags. Oh, my God, yeah, yeah. But he said he had what he called an aw shucks mm. attitude about him. And you kind of get that from Jason Kelsey as well. Just a regular Joe yeah, yeah. dude, doesn't mince too many words and says what's on his mind and is mindful of what he says, too, yes. though. Mm -hmm. It's very deliberate. And, yeah. and the speech yesterday was enormously deliberate. Where do you guys put uh, Chase Utley? Wow, Chase Utley's another good uh, selection. Uh, um Maybe it, in my it, top ten. Maybe. Oh, F you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> world, do you know what I think? World epic champions. I would like to have a catch with him one time. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> I think it would be a real home run. What about and Bryce Harper? Yeah, let me get some. There's some people that are echoing this. So let, let me go to some calls. I'm going to go to Barb. Hi, Barb. You're on the air. Good morning. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. What's um, up, Barb? I definitely think Kelsey's like all my all-time favorite, but I think you guys need to add Clarky and Perron. Bernie, huh. Nobody's saying Bernie Perron. At Bernie. All. You know what's funny is is uh, lovable. We yeah. all, we all know he somebody is. who is not a fan of Bobby Clark who thinks that Bobby Clark and I'm not saying this, uh, but this person says that Bobby Clark. Um, uh, got all of his uh, shine and luster off of the play of others, including one Bernie Perrant. This is Kathy you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I was also like a half a year old when Bobby Clark was playing, so I, I'm, I'm. I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah, it does. yeah. It's yeah. generational. But one oh thing, God. one thing. You could, there's for ev as you said, you hop on the national commentary and you're you know you're hearing Kelsey get ripped apart mm -hmm. and you know boohoo and all this stuff, but it's like yeah. So when. When you take that baggage and you take all that stuff and Preston, you're talking about the aw shucks factor, mm -hmm. all of these things, what what makes the immortal sports legend in a particular area? Do you forgive the sins over the play or is it the whole amalgam of all of those things? Wasn't Ty Cobb supposed to be just a bastard? You know, I heard that that was exaggerated. Okay. So, um, that uh, the, the portrayals of him over the years were amped up for storytelling purposes. Okay. I mean, he uh, ate kittens, which right. is uh, yeah. was yeah. always bad. Yeah, but they're so tender. They are, really. Especially uh, puts a May one. I'm going to go... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to Keith. Hi, Keith. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, bud. So we're talking about most beloved sports star in all of uh, Philadelphia sports history. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting in the car, like, freaking out because I'm like, I, I can't believe nobody has brought up the Bill Burr rant, which is, like, the most famous <laughs> yes. about Philly of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that, are, that, that, that are fictional sports heroes are, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That Rocky, yeah. No, it's, it, it, Joe Frazier, not one person. Joe, Joe Frazier. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good call. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we the whole point of the rant. Yeah, we, te <laughs> we, we tend to think outside, though, of, um, of um, somehow Indiv boxing always gets... Yeah, a lot of it's, times it's it, not a city sport and, and individual sports. individual sports. Uh, so yeah. you know, golfers, tennis right. players, things like that, who are if people can be absolute the greatest in that category, but not necessarily represent a city. Yeah, you know what I mean, like potato sack but, races. Uh, <laughs> but Joe Frazier, he he's got to rank up there as one of the greatest athletes to hail from Philadelphia. Period. By and far. what he went through with Ali, just <sighs> ripping him apart in the. Uh, uh, in the uh, the press, yeah, and everything, but it turns out they were actually buddies, dear friends, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Keith, um, yeah, you know, it's he, he certainly <laughs> was one of the all time great superstars. We're going for most beloved Philadelphia sports right. star. 
Uh, but thank you. Appreciate it, man. Uh, let me go to, let's see, we got a punch here. I uh, will go to Brian. Hey, Brian, good morning. Brian? Oh, hey, sorry to buy the guys at work. Oh, it's nah, okay. Sorry, buddy. What's up? I think you got to put Bryce Harper at least in the top five. Like He's embraced this city so much. He plays his heart out every time with his passion. He's, you know, coming up big and yeah. uh, huge moments. It's, he's, he's a Philadelphia star. I, I think that, uh, and, and listen, this is me. I'm a layman uh, when it comes to sports, but I, I think he's working his way towards that. Yeah, he certainly is. He, yeah. is. he is very Kelsian. Yeah. Very much so. And yeah. how yeah. much, uh, because he has not won a championship, uh, Thanks, how much of that plays into the lore of, Winning a of the player? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good a big, question. It's a big part and because... Uh, that's why we put Kelsey up there in part, in part because of the the Super Bowl win, but also the Super Bowl parade. You get a oh. World Series win with Bryce Harper, you know you're going to get a speech out of Bryce Harper, and mm -hmm. that will vault him higher. That's why I wanted so bad for the Flyers to get a Stanley Cup, Cup with Claude Giroux. Yeah, yeah as a captain, he certainly was here for long enough, yeah. and and mm -hmm. he would have been. I think if they would have. Won a championship. It may not have put him at the top of the list, but way up there with everybody because he's certainly a superstar. And he returns our texts. Yes, yes you know, he does. That too. <laughs> he does. <laughs> um, so Dawn Staley is another one. And, wow. Uh, it, because, but like, you know, women's sports doesn't, it, it's, it's, it doesn't shine as bright. Right. Um, but uh, she's another champion uh, for the city of Philadelphia, even though she doesn't coach here. Uh, and then, oh, geez, Nick the, played for the U.S. women's <laughs> soccer team from oh, New Jersey. Heather Mitz? Heather Mitz. No. Oh, no. Carly Lloyd. Carly Lloyd. Yes. Carly Lloyd. Not the most dynamic speaker on, on right. our air. Uh, <laughs> yeah. right. it's, uh, it's just the nature. It's the nature correct. of the beast, too, that, mm -hmm. that yeah, well, you know, the, the more high, if you're talking the high profile sports, as you rightly pointed out, even boxing with Joe Frazier is, is not what we naturally turn to when we think of you know, sports legends in a city. It's yeah. not the names that first come to mind. Also, his his time came and went. You know, and 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 it's uh, I, I don't know. I think that's part of it too. Yeah, it's it's a generational thing. You know, it's it's after a while these these things start to fade a little bit. Um, not that the acknowledgement isn't there, and of course, uh, Jason will probably be a, a Hall of Famer at some point. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to live on, you know, in that. And then, of course, he's going to be an Eagles Hall of Famer for sure. And it's so funny. I'm so, um, <laughs> like, I, I just love this area. And the fact that he married a woman yeah. from yeah. the area, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. like because, oh, yeah, dude. Because, I, you know, uh, hopefully he, you know, has a, uh, a you know, career in like broadcasting or something oh, he's after going this. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and if that is the case, like, he still is, his home base is going to be here in the area. Yeah. I mean, we've been on, our show's been on for 25 some odd years. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And, yep. and they uh, and it's a it's a matter of uh, who's going to pay for the uniform for you. Where's Todd McCulley now? Right? Yeah, Todd McCulley. <laughs> yeah, he lives on an island outside of Seattle. Does he really? Yeah. Yes. But he had an injury. He, he had, had an he had injury. To, he had to quit. So we league. forgive him and he plays pinball. So that's another that too. That oh, too. we had, like, but we had like good friends. We had. Friends yeah. He was. And, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, they've all been one. They're they're <laughs> ones who return texts and calls, and they're. Yeah. There are th those who do not. I liked it in Kelsey's speech yesterday. He talked about Selleck and Harriman's uh, bar, and he was like, and it was open for a whole six months before it went bankrupt <laughs> because of the number of free drinks free that they drinks. gave. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. I don't think anyone paid when no, they went to that that's bar. That's what Kelsey like, yeah. said. Oh, you would just funny. go. Yeah, yeah. Like, no get wonder they went out of business. They never charged anyone for a drink. <laughs> and he, Jason Kelsey, is very funny. He's a yes. very, yeah. very funny guy. Yes. He had me cracking up uh, yesterday. He was talking about how... Um, he goes, and Jordan Mailotti, yeah. six foot nine, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then he goes, and Darren Sproles is four foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just kept right going. Dude, yeah. I mean, he was five six. Five six is, is small, but he even <laughs> shrunk. Is, is that on there? Yeah, no, okay. Uh, melting pot? Okay. All right, we'll play. This is a really, really funny line. <laughs> right, here we go. The NFL is truly like no other place, and at the same time, represents America as a whole like no other. Fat offense alignment from Cleveland play on the same field as skinny wide receivers from Louisiana and kickers from Chicago. Whew. Tight ends from Stanford, play next to tackles from Kilgore Community College. Defensive ends from inner city Detroit, play next to defensive tackles from Yazoo City, Mississippi. Six foot nine, Jordan Mulata, 
plays the same sport as four foot eight Darren Sproles. <laughs> 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 the melting pot of geographic Good location, way. economic background, race, body type, personality, and athletic traits of an NFL locker room is truly remarkable. That's great. I love it. Uh, let me go to some other calls here uh, for suggestions of, of who might be the most beloved Philadelphia sports figure of all time. Uh, we'll go to Sean. Hi, Sean. Morning. Hey, Gadzooks, guys. Gadzooks, buddy. What's up, man? First off, I want to say I'm a Giants fan, but I respect Kelsey a lot. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's Don't you dare say one of us. <laughs> as a Giants say fan. I, I know who yeah. this is, Sean. Yeah. All right. So here's my thing. And he never gets credit anywhere. And the guy pretty much said, we're the team to beat. And they went out and did it. Won the World Series. He was the original person that was there that started that run before they had is Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, I think Jimmy, and I think he's better than Chase Utley, and I don't get the love for Chase Utley over Jimmy Rollins. That's just fine. Yeah, Chase had a better uh, career for a shorter stretch of time. Uh, Jimmy Rollins' career over a longer period of time was um, more even and more consistent. Uh, you know, both of those guys, Utley and Rollins, were up for Hall of Fame debate this year. Neither one of them made it, but um, they could make it at some point. I, I think that's a good consideration. Jimmy Rollins is a great guy, great player. Jimmy Rollins is in the Hall of Fame, hands down, and he's what five foot tall. Yeah, All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Good luck what with was, your quarterback. What was um, <laughs> what was uh, and this is before my time here? Tug McGraw, right? Um, obviously he was not only you know a great pitcher, but uh, he's great personality too. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I was curious about like Kelsey's personality, winning over the fans, being a fan yeah. favorite. How much does that really play? That's into interesting. Being beloved. Yeah. Well, you know, if you if it just a. Uh, if you go on and consider, if you consider the long term and how they represent the city and how they carry on the legacy and just are, are moral and ethical, and I, I don't think you can do better than Len Lenny Dykstra. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> well, there's an example of a guy. Uh, that's different. Who could have. You know, yeah. had, had he, uh, modeled, I mean. He could have modeled his post-playing uh, career like John Cruck did and look at how much beloved, how beloved John Cruck is at this yeah, point. Yeah, John yeah. was a great player, finished his career as a 300 hitter, but um, what John has done post-career has really made him more beloved. Uh, but the thing about Tug McGraw, Preston, is like Tug McGraw was to the Phillies parade in 1980 what Kelsey was in, yes. in 2018. That's why I was curious. Yeah, yeah. So when the Phillies won that World Series, he threw the last strike. He, he won the World Series for them, and they, and they don't win the World Series without Tug. Um, but he's the dude who's holding up the newspapers. Yep. Who's getting everybody rallied Screaming on the mic. Exactly. Yeah. You, you had mentioned uh, John Crock, and yes, he is a lovable, lovable person in this city. But I, I, I found something out about him that I had no idea uh, he was either last week or the week before, but he literally retired in the middle of a game. Yeah. He got a hit. <laughs> he got a hit, which put his career batting average at 300 exactly. And that's what he wanted. And then he quit. He retired. He he went into Dude. the locker room, got changed, got in his car, and watched the red S end of the game at his own home. Did you ever see that movie, uh, Mister Three Thousand? Oh yes, with, uh, yeah. same thing. Same yeah, thing. yeah, he yeah. got the three thousand hit, and he's like, <laughs> Boom, I am out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so funny. Oh man, that's great. A wow. lot of people are texting in Darren Dalton. I mean, he's certainly beloved and and uh, gone way too soon. Uh, I, I, he deserves mention, but he didn't play his whole career here. You know, the Phillies in '93 wouldn't have been the Phillies if not for Dutch. Um, so do you think I, the I thing, put him the thing, in the like top twenty? Do you think Nick the thing that seals it and that will well? It's all of the I, ingredients for Kelsey. it is all those things because you start to move to one thing you go well there's this where there's that I think obviously the fact that he as you said Casey met a girl here yeah. came here if he's going to stay here, here mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's that means a lot that means and it, we've been talking about that over the past decade where how much it resonates you would talk about often and we'd, we'd point out. Ah, oh, they're, they're here for the season, then they, they go back to Arizona. They go yeah. back to wherever, and it's like, ah, yep. no, 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 no. The dudes who stay, yep. the dudes who embrace the uh -huh. city, yep. that means so much. Yeah, think about every other person that we mentioned throughout the course of this conversation. It, it, there's always a little bit of a check mark. There's a little bit of yeah. a, but, you know, this or that or whatever. With with Kelsey, there's no check marks. No. There's nothing yeah. to, like, say, no, I'm going to take this away from him. He, he loses a point here or two because of this. Like, everything that Kelsey's done throughout his career, even the mistakes that he made, he embraced him. He's like, I'm going to train hard in the offseason, and I'm going to play better next year. And He's he basically did. like, it. Like if, if you would allow Philadelphia to build their their, their their, their athlete. Mm -hmm. That's what he would be. Right. Yes. Yeah. Nobody's mentioned Joel Embiid yet. Uh, and also, I think somebody who could be there um, is Tyrese Maxey. He's a, he's another person that uh, he's just a positive force. 
You know, off, what about off Ben the court? Simmons? Yeah. It's interesting because it's it's uh, yeah. uh, it, it, yeah. it remains to be seen. It's too early to tell. Yeah. But I mean, here's Kelsey was he was yeah until yesterday yeah. he was still you know yeah could have been still a player but already held in that regard. Yep. That says a lot. It mm -hmm. does. And again, I think um, you know having brought a championship to the city means a lot. And Bernie Perron has stuck around here. Yes, he too. has. And he's got a let's, boat. Let's remember that, which we've been invited on. Yeah. Uh, let me go to Alex. Hey, Alex, good morning. You hoo. Yeah. What's up, Alex? Hey, um, so one guy, I don't think I've heard you guys mention him, played his whole career in Philadelphia, you know, took all the booze in the beginning, and now, like, came up with one of the biggest plays in the Super Bowl. Brandon Graham. Yeah, I am. Um, the only reason, Alex, I didn't bring up his name is because I saw that you had called in. You had been on hold for a while, but he's another one. I, I would put him in my top five. Uh, no, I mean, my top 10, um, especially because he had gone through a lot, you know, suffered, uh, you know, torn ACLs right. and came back. And, and again, that strip sack that uh, all but sealed the game, uh, you know, the, the Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that he chose to come back here, you know, uh, over year after year. So take that case. Mm -hmm. Case. Uh, and, and so this, again, the achievements, you can't argue with the achievements. So what sets a... Um, a, a Kelsey, apart from him, that that everyone that has everyone going, I think the, the do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, so, so what, what, is, what Kelsey's a little bit more. Um, the, is it the vocal, the more upfront, more? I mean, on the field, Brandon Graham's very vocal, right. right? Like, and I love if you ever watch any like when he's mic'd up and stuff like yeah. that. The amount of trash that he talks during a game, <laughs> like like Fletcher Cox is like, "Yo, shut up, man!" <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> but uh, and so I love that. But uh, but in front of the cameras, on a microphone, Jason Kelsey is way more vocal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can make a that that can endear him in the hearts. Mm -hmm. And he's not babbling when he talks. He's saying lucid and interesting things. And also, uh, Brandon Graham did do the peewee dance uh, yes, after he did. sacking a uh, quarterback. <laughs> yeah, as he asked he, him As to. he promised on our show. I'm going to go to Chris. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, Casey, did you know diarrhea is hereditary? <laughs> Yeah, it runs in your jeans. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a good uh, yeah. only but a goodie. Thank you for asking, Casey, that, Chris. What's up, yeah, bud? You're welcome. So, so actually, while I was on hold, I, I wanted to talk about I, other things, but I did want to mention Eric Lindros and his 97, um, when, I think it was 97, he won the Hart Trophy. His speech to Philadelphia fans, that chokes me up almost every single time I listen to it. You know, I don't... I I, I don't know it. I don't remember it. Yeah, you won uh, the hard oh trophy. Oh, my God. Yeah. He started crying how he was going to promise to bring a championship to Philadelphia. And, like, the hard trophy didn't really mean that much. What a filthy him. liar. <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to bring the Stanley Cup to, to Philadelphia. No, that's awesome. Eric, uh, Eric cared a lot. And um, you could see, I mean, he was he wore his heart on his sleeve. And um, the thing about Eric's, it's honestly, it's a uh, there should be a Hollywood movie made about his career because the the way that he was run out of town. I think that actually that's part of the reason why there were some knocks against Bobby Clark because the whole Eric, the end of Eric's career in Saga and Philly was in large part because of Bobby Clark mm. and uh, and Ed Snyder. So like Eric, Bobby, <laughs> and there are the sound clips to go along with that. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, yeah, Chris. no, that's a good observation, though. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I uh, want to hear this speech now. When, when it's I, really moving. Yeah. Somebody texted in and says, I don't think there's anyone who quite inserted himself into the city more than Pat Burrell. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a bat. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. The bat. Wow. Uh, well, um, well, listen, it's a, uh, you know, it's a subjective thing, obviously, but it's an interesting question um, as, as far as who might be considered the most beloved uh, sports figure in all of Philadelphia history. I mean, I did name my dog after Reggie White, so Reggie White's in my top five. I forgot it's about true. him. <laughs> I'll tell you this, though. Uh, um, hearkening back to something you said earlier, uh, the, 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 the big battle is already on to sort of seduce him to come to you know a, a number of broadcasting outfits uh, because he's got that... He's turnkey. You put him on camera, he's going to be great. Let me go to one last call. I have uh, Joe on the line. Hey, Joe, morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good. What's up, buddy? I realized two things yesterday. Kelsey's my new crush, and I cry like a baby. <laughs> you cry like a baby. <laughs> I have a worse cry than he did, because I was yeah. sobbing like a baby. Yeah, no. A lot of what he said, again, resonated on so many levels. The stuff about his brother, the stuff about his family, the stuff about... 
uh, you know, uh, being told you can't and making that making you want to do it more. All of those things are, are things that, regardless of sports or not, I think we all at some time experience. That's why I texted yeah. him and told me he can't come on our show. <laughs> yep, he's never allowed on the show again. <laughs> right. yeah. I was going to say Chase Dudley, but I'm, as I'm thinking, I'm on hold. I'm Shane Victorino, man. Um, I love the guy as a Philly. He gave it his heart, all of, you know, played his heart out. I just think Shane Victorino needs to be up there. Shane Victorino. Interesting. Interesting, yes. And Spam. He has a healthy love of Spam. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it, bud. All right. Well, it was, uh, yeah, end of an era uh, yesterday as he uh, <laughs> announced his retirement and uh, maybe, who knows, uh, broadcasting. I know he's got offers. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed in the speech where he talked about how uh, Nick Foles had the biggest <laughs> D in the room. Yeah. And uh, uh, Doug Peterson had the biggest balls in the room. But, it, like, he was just <laughs> flat out talking he, explicitly about... Um, Nick's, Genitals. Nick's BDE. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, think about, again, that parade, and we talk about it, and everyone knows, everyone had the same collective experience. I mean, it still almost seems like, like it, did that really happen? That, that, perfect that moment. one day? Yeah. It was astonishing. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for the calls. We do appreciate it, and uh, thank you, Mr. Kelsey, for yeah. uh, all the years and continued uh, yep. years here in Philadelphia. We're going to break and come back in a second. We'll get to some bizarre file stories, so make sure you stay with us, Fred. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMM. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Preston and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. Brought to you by Zane Western. Save up to 50% off all work, Western, and children's boots during Zane Western's Apparel's March Boot Sale. Located on Route 40 in Piles Grove or online at zanewestern.com. So a Florida couple has been arrested and charged. This is terrifying. After allegedly traveling to Washington State and abducting a relative seven-month-old baby. Oh, jeez. Oh, and, and they went about it a very wild way. Uh, Marley Urego and Chun Lai have been charged with kidnapping, burglary, and robbery in connection with the alleged 20th, uh, February 20th incident. Prosecutors uh, alleged that uh, they targeted the family solely because they have a child. In the days leading up to the incident, Orego allegedly asked her cousin, the mother of the child, what her address was repeatedly. Orego allegedly told the woman that she had ordered a bed, uh, ordered a bed frame for the woman's child, and that it would be delivered to her on February 20th. When the day finally arrived, the victim says that there was a knock at the door soon after her husband left for work. She reportedly told authorities she looked through the peephole, saw someone who appeared to be a delivery driver with an Amazon box. Uh -huh. As soon as she opened the door, uh, the driver, who prosecutors say was actually alive. Uh, allegedly began punching her in the face, threw her to the ground, and zip-tied her wrists and ankles. Jeez. Uh, a woman unknown to her then entered the apartment and allegedly held her down while the man put the infant in an Amazon box and left the apartment. What now the you hell? Could, you yeah. can rate your Amazon deliveries. I would give that a bad one. One of the suspects allegedly indicated that uh, they would harm the woman's two-year-old child if she didn't comply. Once the suspects left, she was able to free herself from the zip ties and call 911. <laughs> The victim's father reportedly told authorities that he suspected Orego was behind the incident. He claimed that it was unusual for her to ask about the victim's address because they weren't close. Uh. He also claims that they were aware of a plan Orego had to sell a baby for $70,000. Oh, oh, man. Once police were notified, they were able to use cell phone information to locate the couple's vehicle and track them down. They were able to rescue the infant who was unharmed less than four hours after the alleged kidnapping. Bail has been set for $750,000 for each of the suspects. Wow. Mm, that's that's crazy. Yeah. A main man has been... <laughs> It, my main my man, main man. Mm -hmm. has been indicted after lacing ice cream with THC that was consumed by several people at a cafe in New Hampshire last year. Mark Flory was indicated... This is the best ice cream I've ever had. I really love it. I love this ice cream. ...was indicted <laughs> on one count of tampering with consumer products. Flory laced a batch of coffee Oreo-flavored ice cream with THC. I don't think you need to lace it with anything. That's a good flavor. It's, you can yeah. get a high off of that anyway. Off that. And uh, he stored it with other batches of ice cream in a freezer at the Roots local cafe and catering where Look the ice, I'm doing. ice cream was then sold to consumers. Wow. Several people, including a child, became ill after eating it and later tested positive. 
positive, positive for THC. Uh, the charge of tampering with the consumer product carries a sentence of up to 10 years in prison and $250,000 fine. So just to be clear on this, you cannot dose people's food with narcotics. Probably not okay. a good idea. Uh, the owners of Roots Cafe posted a message on their Facebook page in the wake of the incident saying that they were cooperating with police and all the affected ice cream has been removed from the store. All right, I got sent this uh, a few times for a pretty obvious reason. The uh, top 2024 Iditarod trial or trail sled dog race contender, Dallas CV, shot and killed a moose. What? To defend himself and his dog team early on. Why Monday. don't you forget the moose? For a moment. Uh, it was about a hundred about a hundred miles into the thousand mile race. Uh CB's team was about fourteen miles past uh Squinta, Squintana, uh checkpoint when the moose became entangled with the dogs and the musher on the trail. CV shot the moose in self defense and notified race officials. Uh when he arrived at the Finger Lake checkpoint, CV was forced to drop a dog that had been injured in the encounter with the moose. Oh. CV's kennel, uh, the moose, dog's okay. Yeah. Uh, CV's kennel identified the dog as uh, Falu. Race officials said that the dog was flown to Anchorage and is in the care of veterinarians. Now, this is interesting. Race rules allow Iditarod mushers to carry firearms for protection from large animals like moose, but they must stop to gut any big game animal they oh. shoot oh, so that it can be salvaged. The rules also say that any mushers who come upon a fellow competitor in the process of gutting a game animal must also stop and help, and they are not allowed to pass until the musher who killed the animal has continued on the trail. That is wild. So yeah. they, he would have had to gut the moose. Yep. Um, and he uh, did. I mean, yeah. He's, oh my God! He spoke about the the incident and said, "I gutted it the best I could." But I it gutted was, it real good. He said it was ugly. Uh, race. Why Marshall, don't you forget the moose <laughs> for a moment? Race uh, Marshal Warren Palfrey said in a statement that efforts had been underway to salvage the moose meat. So what do they do with the moose meat? They eat it right there. I uh, know, not right there, but they eat will, it. They, they don't want it to go to waste. Keep eating. <laughs> Another idea to ride. <laughs> All right, this thing's like a thousand miles long. I'm, I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> I just ate a whole moose. Another I did ride veteran uh, Jesse Holmes. You got the hoof. Had uh, mushed through the same section of trailhead uh, ahead of him and said that she had also seen an angry moose. Oh, she no, said, I just listen to this. She said, I had to punch a moose in the <laughs> nose out there. God damn, that is That's a, like Clark Griswold, dude. Yeah. A moose is ever a bad day. Well, that uh, is that is that is a much listen, I thought it was an arduous race to begin with. This all this added on makes it near superhuman. Uh, fellow race uh, veteran Paige Drobney saw the moose up close after it was shot, and so did the mushers behind her on the trail. She said it's dead in the middle of the trail. My team went up and over it. Uh Gabe Dunham's dog team hit it too. He said there happened to be a dead moose in the trail. And that kind of flipped the sled. I did laugh and think, man, even when they're dead, they're still getting me. I best kiss it, eat this. Uh, the race marshal said in a statement that he would continue to gather information about the incident. By late Monday afternoon, CV and his 15 dog team had continued down the trail, and they were just beyond the Rainy Pass checkpoint at race mile 153. But they managed to salvage the meat. So imagine if you well. have a bad race and you hit a moose and a deer and Think, think of all the meat. You're, uh -huh. you're like yeah. a traveling butcher shop. Yep. All right, and then uh, one last story. Let's go with this one. A man is facing multiple charges after he allegedly assaulted a convenience store clerk and then drove his truck into the business. Uh -huh. uh, the suspect identified as Abigail Dominguez became upset after noticing that the beer coolers inside the store were locked. Authorities say Dominguez allegedly punched the clerk's head, got into his Ford F-150, and drove into the store, resulting in thousands of dollars in damage. When the police arrived, both Dominguez and the passenger were stuck inside. Police had to break the windows to get them out of the vehicle. Dominguez was charged with assault and I'm, criminal mischief. I'm sorry, I was just very thirsty. <laughs> and that is all I have in the bizarre file for you. Uh, this morning. We're going to take a quick break. Come back in a moment. Actor Dana Roebuck will be joining us a little later, so hang out for a bit. We will return shortly. Preston and Steve. <laughs> so that's WMMR. Thanks, Kath. We just had a lengthy discussion about uh, Jason Kelsey and uh, his retirement yesterday and, and who may be considered the 
most beloved uh, sports figure in Philadelphia history, and a lot of people, you know, feel that he is probably the one that fills that, uh, you know, yeah. That slot. Yeah. Um, it, this, it, it, are you blown away by uh, again the, the the tectonic response to this? It's just I, it, it has people. Mm. Not blown away because yeah. it's deserved. I mean, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I definitely think that uh, you know that he earned the respect and, and admiration of the city. But what I wanted to, to expand on that a little bit more on was uh, outside of that of of you know his great personality and everything that he's achieved. But he did a forty five minute <laughs> retirement press conference, and he had a hard time getting through forty. I don't know how many of those minutes spelt. Uh, spent uh, choking back tears right from the get go, yeah. and yeah, from the very very beginning. Hit it. Well, I'll play a little bit of this here. This oh. is him trying to get started here at the very top. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, we'll see how long this lasts. Forty-five minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not a good start. There you go. So it is uh, for those who have ever tried to speak in the midst of tears. It is hard <laughs> to do. Uh-huh. It is. If your emotions get the, the best of you and you are and all eyes are on you, it is a very difficult position to be in. Well, and you have two choices. You can either try to fight it, which was what he was doing at first, or if you just let it go and really you start crying, uh-huh. it's actually easier to speak than... To, yes. let, to, to let yourself commit to the cry? If you commit to the cry and you go, like, sometimes you have no choice and, and it just comes out. And then eventually, it'll be shortly after, you you can, you, you know, gain collect your... collect yourself? Yes, you can oh. collect yourself. And at least that's what I find for myself. I, no, it's it's true. I, and I found that especially from my kids and when, when they, you know, the whole let yeah. it out, yeah. go ahead, yeah, yeah, let yeah, it yeah. out. Mm-hmm. It really does work. But if yeah. you've got everyone watching you... It's hard to start blubbering. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah, I to it, let yourself go to that. It's hard yeah, to do. It is. You're, you're you're charged with kind of delivering something in a cohesive manner, and you become acutely aware of each tick of the you know the clock as you're as that pause, and you're hearing yourself go. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just recently, when my dad passed away on the air, I had difficulty, yeah. and so. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not, that wasn't something that, you know, I, I, I mean, I, we, we, as I said before, we, we knew it was coming. We were accepting it was a beautiful way that for my dad to, uh, you know, to depart the world and everything was, all the T's were uh, crossed and I's dotted. But in that moment, Preston, when you start to feel it happen, I'm like, I knew this is going to happen because you're, you're sharing something. Um, but there, there is, um, you know, e- even if you, tr- have you ever tried to? Well, you've had it happen. I, I do it. You try to describe a, m- a moment in a movie. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. And, you and go that's down just, that slope. And that's and a like, little bitty thing. This is stupid. And yet I'm and yet I'm going down that hole. How do I pull it back? There's been a couple of occasions where I've been asked to say something, and it's not even anything that's really that sad or overly emotional. <laughs> and I'll start to feel myself. I'll start to feel the cry coming up, and I'm like. Why am I? Why? Why am I doing, doing this? this? Casey and farts all the time. Why is yeah. my body doing this? And why is that so embarrassing? Yeah, you know, and I don't, Kathy, to cry. You're the only female in the room, but like, is it? Is it because as a man, it's embarrassing to show your emotions like that, and it shouldn't be. And that's why, like, the speech yesterday from Jason Kelsey was so important because it showed everybody that like a tough, you know. Man, the yeah. man can yeah. show his emotions. And, I know some people. Yeah. I, I don't. I never thought that. I always thought. Uh, listen, if you're a bl- if you're uh, on the bl- battlefield or something, and and you're a sergeant, and you're blood, I don't know if we can take the fort. <laughs> then that could be a problem. But but if um, in something like that is profound, I think you'd have to be inhuman to not. I agree. Well, there's and situations it, yeah. where you like. Okay, so I was recently in this situation uh, on Saturday. I hosted the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation Fashion Show. Uh, they come into town every year. It's at the King of Prussia Mall. Oh, kids and, with cancer. Oh, kids oh, with okay. cancer. Yeah. And uh, I hosted every year. It was uh, myself and Michael Barkan. And uh, I've never. I, I hosted the first year with a girl who got choked up, and it was okay because. This this is what you're dealing with, but I was able to to shake keep, it off. You're making me look bad. No, but I was able to. I, I so then I took over when she when she started to get a little upset. I took over and I was able to do it. I did it, uh, you know, a few years in a row. Whatever reason, thinking maybe it was the time of month or something. I <laughs> it caught you. It so and I could feel it, and yeah. I was like, oh, oh my god. Man. And I was like the host. I was at yeah. the podium. Michael Barkham was like throwing in little you know comments, and yeah. he was being fun. But I I I and I didn't break down, but I felt. My 
myself and I was like, you have to take a deep breath yeah. and let, compose yourself. But that's what it was. You see these little kids walking down the runway. I was reading this one kid had uh, 28 rounds of chemo, four rounds of radiation yeah. and surgery. And he was like four. <sighs> and and then you see his whole family, That'll you see his anyone. mom yeah. clapping mm. in the audience. And I was like, oh my God. And I just had to, yeah, you just have to. But I felt it coming on and I'm like, if I let it go, that's it. I'm, I'm just going to break down. Did that kid comes over to no, you I, I didn't. And because it, Come on, you're a professional. It mm. was a fashion show. So I had a minute to, while the kids were walking uh, on the runway, I just kind of like took a deep breath and was like, all right, you got this. Yeah, I've, I've been a, a number of times. So I do the Take Steps Walk uh, for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And every year the, the, the featured speaker will cry because mm. uh, it's very... It's a lot. It's impactful it's a lot. for them. You know, the Crohn's is a horrible, horrible disease if you get it to certain degrees. And uh, and I'm the guy who stands back there and goes, it's okay, man, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I kind of I kind of try to yeah. sh- say a couple of words. All right, don't I'm worry about it. Yes. And some people will get uh, embarrassed that they did that, and I'll have to say, listen, you made a huge impact by showing your emotions like that. You know, it's, they, yes, it's it's, it's, it's like okay. it's obviously yes, and it's, and when people hear that, they realize it's okay because this carries import now, and yeah. not that you want to falsely do that, but no. it, it's coming from a real place. Yes, I get it. Um, uh, keeping you is how many times have you lost it while, uh, while speaking in public? Yeah, well, like for that, not because you're, cause you're, you know, your daughter deals with it. Yeah. Not, not many. I've been, I've been pretty good. There's only yeah. been a couple of occasions and I, and I've kind of, uh, you know, my voice is quavered yeah, and, yeah. and so on, but I haven't full on, I can't go on. Right. Broken down. Uh, I have in private situations, but not like, uh, not on the microphone. So we're all speaking about why this is all good and healthy why does it get made fun of so automatically like you hear somebody crying you yeah. like your natural reaction is to Pussy. laugh at them yes why some people oh, I are I don't, I don't think so i, I don't, don't think it's, it's not natural I inclination think, but there are some people to be fun, but i to think be, it's within yourself like i think we don't want to let other people see us cry i think yeah. if you were to see me cry you wouldn't laugh at listen, me listen or maybe you would. we're all pretty hideous when we cry and i think that Except, might be I'm not, really, not you yeah. right. no. that might be part of it because yeah. your face contorts and you're, yeah, yeah. you're you know it's just it's and and, and it, it can be funny it, 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 listen yeah. if, if it's for like a goofy like i, I sometimes if someone that i really care about I, i'll start chuckling and go it's okay yeah. you know like it can it can elicit humor but i know what you're saying nick is that it's such a natural honest thing why do we well i think it's i think it's the way we distance ourselves that's not me let me I'm give you an example crying. this this weekend i had to speak at a funeral right yeah, yeah. And, and uh i made it through but i was crying as i yeah, was doing it sure. but, but it's a funeral mm. it's a natural environment right, where you right. expect people yeah. to cry right but if like you're just out there and you're talking about how much i don't know you love somebody or like this affected you when you start to get you get welled up People like they're they're quick to laugh at you, and I, I find that kind of re- reprehensible. Oh, I I I I um not to disagree with you. I'm I'm more inclined to make fun of myself in that situation, not necessarily laugh at at anybody else. Said, so, Who's going to do this, Steve? Yeah. I remember actually <laughs> talking to your wife at some event, and she's like, "This is probably like 20 years after yeah. we had to put her sheet to sleep, right?" And I'm talking about my dog, and I got choked up talking about my dog. I hear you. She man. didn't laugh at me, but I was like, <laughs> "I'm like, I cannot believe I'm I'm you know crying." About this right now, well, no. yeah. Maybe you know why why we as people get a little embarrassed about it is because um, it's a loss of control. Yes, yeah. Mm, you, that's you, it for at, me. At that point, you you have lost control of your emotions. Their emotions bowels. have taken over you, and yeah. you have just no. soiled yourself. I'm, I'm crappy. <laughs> what am I more embarrassed about? So <laughs> I could see why that is why you resist yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know? Again, you you look to you. <laughs> It's something like you almost back up. Like yeah. when people, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this when the person's crying. I had this moment, and uh, we have the audio here on the air about a year ago, where I uh, broke down on on the air. I had no idea that it was that my emotions were going to get the best of me at that moment, and and it happened. And I had to hand the microphone or whatever off to somebody else. Oh, if you was, guys recall, I this. do remember. Yes. Yeah. What was this? This was uh, in Glendale, Arizona, when I was. Oh. Uh, and is this what we have a cop? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is this is Casey. We have audio of this. Here we go. This is the lanyard in loving memory of Cheryl Molinix, oh. former game day staff. Um so tell oh, oh, Casey's oh. getting choked yeah. up. Can you read that for me? He can't get through it. Go ahead. In loving memory of Cheryl Molinix, former game day staff, forever Eagles fan, 
Is that cuz? Yeah, that was cuz. And so would that happen? That's legit. I that's couldn't beautiful. finish yeah, it. Dude. I that's didn't know beautiful. it was coming. Yeah. But, dude, not only that, I, for the next half hour, I... I was Couldn't periodically crying. Yeah. Like, uh, we, we got done doing what we were doing, and then we ended up driving to Duncan, and I was, like, crying the whole way. And, and thank we God. We like, on Duncan. <laughs> but thankfully, you know, uh, Kyle and Cuz and, and Jackie were in the car. I didn't have to talk at it's all. It's okay, man. Do you, you want a salad bowl? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, no, listen, I it, that to me, that is as, as, as pure and honest yeah. a, a piece of audio as you're going to find. And it, it, and I, I, when you started to read it, I, I you know, the impact, the weight, it all comes together. And sometimes you're just caught off guard like, why did it click now? Right. I've done this many times. Here's a text from somebody that says, uh, and they're quoting Ted Lasso, yeah. who said, uh, crying is an orgasm for the soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is true. cathartic. I mean, I like it you, is. you feel good after a good cry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Once you get over the whole, you know, <laughs> yeah. hitching thing <laughs> and you can breathe again, it's like, oh. And it, it kind of. Wears you out a little bit too. When do you think you are in your in your own past most surprised at a uh, cry? You know, something that uh, all, overwhelms you in a way that you did not expect. Well, you know, it's funny. Casey talks about um, when I talk about Chelsea, our my dog. But that's uh, not surprising. But but I mean. When I lost but, but my virginity, yeah, I yeah. cried. You cried? Baby. Don't stop. Don't I'll, I'll give you an example, a personal example. You probably did. When I... Uh, <laughs> You're a big nerd. <laughs> the hell's going... What's wrong with you? <laughs> just, it was a, no, it's my little, my little special gift and I gave it to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, shut up. You smell like rubber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! What's uh, what were you thinking, Nick? Yeah, Nick. When I got to the top of Kilimanjaro, oh, yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. audio of that, and to me, that was just like this weirdly cathartic. I worked really, really hard to do it. And you, had, you had no anticipation that no you, man you would have achieved. And I that? called into the radio station, and uh, I, Matt Cord recorded it. Matt was on. I think we were on vacation or something. What doesn't matter? Do we? Do we? There's audio of it. I'm somewhere. sure we have it somewhere. I, I thought it was rather touching. One of one of my regrets in all the years of being on this show was something I did to Casey one time. He, he took his virginity. And now, <laughs> and then <laughs> laughed at me for crying. Yeah. <laughs> No, Casey had done the uh, the Bend of the Shore bike ride the very yeah. first time, did the 60-mile ride, and it was very emotionally impactful for him. Yes, 65. And then <laughs> he wanted to, I think it was, you wanted to come on the air. You had a very special thing you wanted to say about it. Huh. Um, or, or, or no, no, it was, no, you had, go, we had gone and taken a, t like a vacation or something like that. And you really missed us. And you thought about the show and you had prepared a statement or something like that, huh. something you wanted to say. And we kind of, kind of kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And, uh, and eventually you got on the air and I was just kind of, you know, ribbing you a little bit. I'm just going to tell you this right now. And you, and then you refused to, uh, to reveal it to us. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't recall. Oh. So... Um, well, I'm glad I hurt your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, 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 don't feel bad about it. Yeah, 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 don't beat yourself up. We, we good. And then we the, wet. But the first time we wet. We wet. Uh, true that. Uh, the but when I did cross that finish line for the first time, yeah, you the, got emotional. I did. Yeah. I don't know why. I think it's because I've been so uh, terribly out of shape for such <laughs> yeah. a, my entire existence that uh, I I wasn't sure I was even gonna you know make it to no, that far, yeah. and, and I did. And I would, was like, would that you know? I think like whether it be Kilimanjaro or those kind of things where you. You're, listen, you're, you have achieved you something. Hard. You've prepped for it, and and then, um, yeah, I, I would think that's a natural response. I heard the three of you guys made fun of me when for crying at the top of Kilimanjaro. Did we? That's what I heard on the air. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. We probably did. did. Probably. But if we did, we weren't seriously <laughs> making fun three. of you. Am I in there? I don't think I did. I would no, never do was, that. I think he was not. I wasn't on air that day, so I don't know. You I think what happened was I later on I cried because. Uh, from laughter. <laughs> no, no. No, it, it seems very touching. Uh but but when you were when you are trying to deliver uh and, and even a, a prepared statement or if you're just speaking from the heart in front of a group of people and it catches you, it's uh it's really hard to to regroup. And Kelsey went through that a bunch of times yesterday. I found that if someone in the audience can flash you, it'll put you back on track. Certainly will. Yeah, yeah. Uh my best friend Steve at his uh daughter's wedding. His daughters. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Kathy loves that. <laughs> My daughters. Uh, he it just doesn't have to be every time. Had rehearsed his speech. Yeah. His father's speech. 
um, several times. He did it for me. He did it for me in private. Uh, he got choked up during that. Right. And He's trying to trying to get comfortable with it. Yeah, and that's the kind of what you have to do. And of course, during the actual ceremony, he you know lost he, it. He, it. Yeah, it's it's moments like that are pretty standard. Like you're gonna, it's gonna happen, and everybody's expecting it too. So it's not a big deal for to be embarrassed about it. You so know I'm gonna I mean? deliver a little bit of a um, you know a, a eulogy for my dad. You right. know, my brother's asked me to do it. Yeah. Uh, um, and so that. Uh, we'll see. You know, I, I think my, I, I'm going to incorporate a, a fair amount of the humor stuff that my dad helped imbue us with and me specifically. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were playing that audio back when he passed away. And, and uh, so, uh, I, you know, who knows, though? Yeah. Who knows in the moment? Because something will just go into your mind and you'll say, like you at, at that moment, Casey, every second of football adoration or every person in your life you knew who, who you lost, who was a football fan or anyone mm -hmm. who's... Anyone who's, you know, puts their hopes and aspirations and things like that, it just resonated with you. Yeah, I um, and it, I was at a funeral uh, a couple of months ago. My uh, my neighbor had passed away, and and um, so the grandkids and and daughters came up and they eulogized, Daughter. and I had actually had come to the realization at that funeral that I don't want anybody eulogizing me at my, my right my, right uh, funeral. I just don't want it. Like I I don't want you saying all the all the good things and and like leaving out all of the warts. I don't want anybody crying over me publicly. It's uh, how about a yeah. warts only eulogy? <laughs> oh, I, this. I, let me tell you about this son of a bitch. Yeah, I would. I think I would probably prefer <laughs> that because anytime somebody says anything nice about me, I'm like, oh, if you only knew. Wow. <laughs> uh, some calls are coming in. I'm going to go to Mike. Hi, Mike. You're on the air. Good morning. Godzilla. Godzilla, Godzilla to you. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey guys. So the most amazing thing just happened to me last week. Um, I, I'm probably going to choke up when I'm telling you this right now. But, okay. Um, every single person that I've told, I've not not cried. So um, I'm in the middle of talking to my girlfriend's daughter. She's 11 years old, and she just comes out. I'm crying right now. <laughs> so she just comes out, and she was like, Mike, is it okay if I call you dad? <gasps> Wow. wow. What did you say? I cried and, like, I pulled her in and I held her in my arm and Aww. I cried like a baby for like 10 minutes. Oh, Dude, my that is that is awesome. I once asked a prostitute to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, daddy. Daddy. Yeah. No, no, that's as my sweet man. and genuine as you can get. How long have you been seeing her mom? Like nine months or so, nine, uh -huh. ten months. Wow. Um, it's been great, man. But I mean, for, for that to happen was just amazing. And then I was telling one of my clients yesterday, who has become like a good friend, with, with me and him too, and he started to like cry. I'm like, Gary, why are you crying? And he's like, dude, I'm crying for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, you get it. That's, I, that's wonderful. A, 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 a good for you that you uh, clearly have a relationship where she, you know, considers you that. So that's terrific. Yeah. We love each other, man. Like, oh, that's it's great. Amazing, really. Good for you guys. Yeah. I love hearing stuff like that. See you, bud. Thanks, man. And oddly enough, I got slapped by the prostitute when I um, Here's a text. <laughs> when, she, when you asked her about yeah, the daddy yeah, thing? Like, she said, it's a bet said too much. Wow. I don't, no kissing and no daddy. Uh, this text says, uh, I don't think I've ever seen my husband cry. He gets so uncomfortable whenever I cry. Uh, which is often out of happiness, uh, sadness, cause because uh, uh, a cold won't go away, etc. Yeah, and I'm sure it's psychological for both of us. But not everybody's a crier. No, and, and my, my, some people aren't. My father was a crier, and my mom was not. And I remember you know, having and but my I think um, people crying uh, like my father makes my mom feel uncomfortable, so she tries to make jokes. Yeah, and so I remember uh, we were having a family dinner one time, and uh, and my dad was you know making some. Uh, you know, heartfelt speech. You got a little bit choked up, and my mom's like, "You big baby." <laughs> <laughs> that wow. and, oh, dude, I'll, uh, my dad shot daggers at her. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like, just I'm wait like, till the kids are out of the room. <laughs> 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 my dad has turned into a crier at nearly every other sentence at this Aww. point, and it's like, and, it's like it, yeah. and I think maybe Casey he had his emotions bottled up for um, half of his life or two thirds of it or whatever, and now it's anything and everything, and it's. I don't know. It's kind of sweet. I, I'm, I'm happy it to is. see that about it's it. Just, it allows you to tap off some of that. It's like the, you, you ball them up and push them down inside. Even. I, so I was at, at this funeral on Sunday, and I was actually really surprised to see um, my nephews crying because they're younger, you know, yeah. and, and um, it was it's a sad affair, but I thought it might be lost on them. And it like it was actually kind of 
um, I don't know, it made me proud of them to see them displaying their emotions and having this uh, death affect them as well in a, in a profound way. Yeah. Uh, let me go over to Vince. Hi, Vince. Good morning. Hey, Godzooks, guys. Godzooks, buddy. What's up? Hey, well, I mean, way to follow me up with that emotional story from that, uh, you know, that guy. But, yeah. uh, mine's, <laughs> mine's a little, uh, yeah, mine's a little uh, funnier. Um, it's it, basically that, um, you know, when Pearl Jam closed out the spectrum, um, they played uh, uh, Better Man. And, you know, when the crowd, um, when the crowd sings that first verse, I don't know what it is when the whole crowd takes over. I think Eddie even cried. Um, it's just very, I get goosebumps even thinking about it right now. You I know, get it. The whole crowd. Yeah. The crowd takes over the song. It's just, I, I remember being in a car, uh, by myself and I, I guess I was having an emotional day and I just, you know, welled up and cried like a little baby. Yeah. You, you affix, you affix whatever it was, whatever it, and just the, sh the pure sentiment of having a collection of people who are all yes. pretty like-minded who are experiencing something together in that way that connects you to the people around you, I completely get why you're, you're getting emotional. And, and now yeah. that memory's fixed in your memory, and, and, and every time it comes up, you'll get emotional. Yep. yep. It's, it's, what, no, it's, yeah. what, it's what actors do. They, they yes. sort of, yeah. they, they, well, you know, whereas we, we, we maintain spank banks, they maintain <laughs> cry banks. Cry banks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, you know, I, I, I'm, <laughs> hopefully the next time, because I know there will be a next time where I'm talking and uh, and I start to uh, get choked up. I'm gonna try and remember to try and talk through it, right? Just 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 to see see what because, happens. Yeah, because you, I've never allowed myself the chance to tr cry and talk at the same exact time. I have time. to pause. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 you know, I'll do the. Uh -huh. Well, it's hard to breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to breathe when you when your 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 system is all off. You right. can you know you like physically. <laughs> I don't think you're getting enough oxygen. That's when you should fart. It'll yeah. equalize your system. It's like trying it'll, to... It'll, 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 you squeeze your yeah, nose and yeah, fart? Yeah. Can you cry okay. and talk at the same time? Can you sneeze with your eyes open? Can you poop without peeing? <laughs> I'm good now. Can you poop without peeing? Yeah. Uh, yes, think actually, about I can. Uh, maybe. Mm, no, no I have. In fact, I'm on a team. Okay. I, oh, I didn't know that. You're the captain? I will pee the first, then poop. Yeah, that's oh, what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. I thought you meant at the same time, both coming out of the yeah. same, uh, at different holes. Same holes, same holes. I just poop what I can do. I just poop peed. Can I bring it back to crying or <laughs> on the toilet still? Just one more addition, Nick, to that. There was a story you had about someone, remember, in the Bizarre File, yes. who was wired that way. Yeah, it was weird. Okay, wait, okay. which way? Uh, weird, that, weird. Where they, they peed poop? out of their butt. All right. yeah. No, they pooped out, out of their, their penis. penis. Yeah. Real oh, very yeah. No, no, it was some the kind truth. of a, 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 a fistula yeah. or oh. yeah, there I, was I, fecal I, matter in their urine. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. Right. Well, back to crying. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> there were, I think, in like 22, uh, 2022 and 2023, mm -hmm. several moments where having been disconnected from society for a stretch because of yeah. COVID, like being back at a concert at all for the first time post-COVID to me was emotional. I found myself getting welled up. So when the guy was talking about Pearl Jam and, and Better Man or whatever, like a connection to humanity where you feel it and it's palpable throughout the entire room, I can totally see why that would bring, you know make you emotional. Sure. How many... How many so, how many Pearl Jam? We talk about music. How many Pearl Jam memories? How many yeah, moments man. in time are frozen that can make you start your tear up? Where you just sit and think about it, right? The song release for right. me is you know off the first record. They did the entire ten album, and uh, and when they got to that at the Wells Fargo Center six years ago, or no, eight years ago, it was just purely emotional. There's a great scene in the uh, Stanley Kubrick masterpiece, a movie called Paths of Glory, about World War One. And uh, they used to, the French used to actually, if they felt that the troops had not performed well during mm -hmm. battle, they would actually pick a few people and execute them for cowardice. It was a wonderful thing. The, the French were, were very embarrassed, rightly so, for many years by it. Uh, but these troops, um, you know, the, 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 the Kirk Douglas plays the, 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 the sergeant, the commander, who, who he goes by the uh, tavern and all the soldiers after these, these other soldiers have been executed. And they're, you know, they're in this tavern and they're, they're catcalling this woman up on stage. And she starts to sing this sort of song that is reminiscent of their of their their mm. their home you know and they all immediately just you know the switch gets flicked sure. you know and it's it's, it's it's as real a depiction of what, what that how that happens yeah. and how you go oh my god well these moments are they're, they're meant to do that I yeah mean, like you know you you take uh hmm. certain pieces of music you take uh the uh, plays musicals um and they they are they are attempting to tap into that emotion yeah. 
And and if so, it's you know, uh, it can be good for you. I think with Kelsey yesterday uh, specifically, like he was very tapped into the finality of this, right? For him, like announcing yeah. that it was his retirement, he knew. He's talking about the end of a major chapter in his life, and, and I'm sure that's part of the reason why it was so emotional for there's him. A, there's a funny episode of Modern Family where Julie Bowen's character, the mother, for some reason when she hears about death, she starts to smile. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know why I do this! <laughs> yeah. I can't help it. She's like, she's like, she can't process it. But, and, and, but retirement is a funny thing because, yeah. um, like, we had John DeBella by here. Yeah. John got emotional. He's he got emotional yeah. several times. Yeah. Uh, you know, on his own radio show, on our radio show. But then Bill. you got Bill Lesson. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, it's it, yes. really, yeah. there, there are different oh states. God. Some, some sure. people are like, I am the F yeah. out of here, people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Bing. Like the, the, the cartoon. Bing. Yeah. Seeing Bill on Friday, he looked so happy. So, right? Oh my God, he's like, loving life. Like stress free yes. and yeah. just, yeah. I was but happy for him. For somebody like Kelsey in the upcoming seasons, yeah. we're walking out, you know, if he's attending a game or if he's watching a game, is he, is part of him going to be like, oh God, he's going to, man, do I miss it. You know what I mean? So I know someone, uh, you know, uh, who is, I, I predicted they're going to need to do, they're going to need to stay busy. They're going to need to keep their toes dipped into this profession that they are retiring from. And sure as hell, we're about six months from the retirement and they're like, I'm, I, I don't know, this is not, I need to do something. So yes, I, I think, but he has, everything he does will tangentially be related to football. By the way, DeBella was here like two weeks ago yeah. doing a podcast. He <laughs> was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, he was in one of the production yeah, studios. You know what? He can make his own schedule. He doesn't have totally. to get up at yeah. four o'clock in the morning. So that's fine. But I think what happens with athletes is different from other people retiring in some aspects because they're not... Um, they can like physically they're young enough to still yeah. do it, but yeah. really their, their body has taken, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. it, it, it's taken a beating and yeah. they need to kind of rest and, and relax. At the, the elite moment. level is gone. Yeah. I mean, he could go play, join a men's league somewhere yeah. and have fun playing football if he wants to, but it's never, ever going to compare. You and I come in every morning and then the medical kits come out <laughs> yeah. and we start the injections yep, and to we get start ready. the thing and yep. we doing like it's, and then the pills, all of it. We do have that audio if you want to listen to it from um, when Nick m made it to the summit. Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Did, Marissa, did you keep him when we made fun of him afterwards? Or I no? think this okay. is just right. the uh, the audio, audio of that. I don't right. think it's our you were on a, of it. on a sat phone, were you not? Yes, it was. Yeah. I'm at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. It's the hardest, most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, it was so worth it. I mean. We came up with seven people. All seven of us made it. There were two girls, or three guys in the group, and, and four girls in the group. And two of the girls got sick a little bit, but they they kept going on. I'm so proud of them. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, you okay? So, you okay? So I'm all right. I'm a little emotional about all of it. So. No, dude, that, no problem. Was, was there ever a point that you didn't think you were going to make it to the top? Is that Matt Cord? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there was a point where I was really exhausted and didn't know if I could do it, but we just kept going, and, and uh, they just they keep telling you to go slowly, go slowly. The, the, the Swahili way of saying it is, Poly, poly. You just have to go poly, 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 poly all you know the whole time, and it's one foot in front of another. And so, uh, yeah, we made it. Wow, oh my gosh. I haven't heard that ever. Yeah. Hey, look, um, I gotta give away some uh, stick tickets. So. <laughs> a little younger than <laughs> is it, when you hear yourself back, yeah. uh, it's like, well, why does Matt sound and, and you sound like uh, James Earl Jones? Yeah. <laughs> you know what sounded? Um, what I heard there, Nick, was. Um, I think that emotion came from the pride that you felt for the group. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what it's from. Yeah, I think what we did have fun with was apparently on the way up, Nick, you said the amount of human feces. Yeah. <laughs> There's, uh, there's beautiful parts of Kilimanjaro, and then there's, there's the human parts of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> yeah. then getting back to the pooping out your penis thing. Yeah, I saw that. I, did, I, did, I had no idea that was one of the aspects of it, but apparently it's the same thing on Everest we were talking about there the other day. Yeah. Well, listen, and, and part of the, the, the team effort thing, too, is something yes. to... Uh, as, as with Kelsey. Pride, as yeah. with Kelsey, same thing. It's, uh, you know, you, the, the group of people, you did it together, you helped each other, supported each other. You he, know. he beautifully articulated all the different people from d different walks of life who yeah. congregated to make that team what it was, yep. uh, you know, I mean, 
again, we're in a situation here. Uh, I, you know, I'll, they'll uh, they'll pry the microphone from my dying hands. You know, <laughs> cold but, dead hands. Yeah, <laughs> but did, didn't it make you think, Steve, yesterday when watching and listening to it, like? Uh, to be able to go out on terms like that, you you can't help but personalize it and make it about yourself. Absolutely. And think about like what would my speech be like, you know? And 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 the, God, I hope that the four percent of the people <laughs> can't, re, you know, react the way that that, that they did for Kelsey. Here. I think what I will actually do is fully lift Kelsey's retirement speech. <laughs> yeah. Just to yeah. talk about Zach Ertz, <laughs> and yeah, Andy Reid. What's here. he saying? <laughs> Here's my entire retirement speech right here. Uh, Santa's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> It was a Preston-shaped <laughs> hole in the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam! Yeah. There. No, I'm sure yeah, that right. when that day comes, I'll be a Ryan right. Piccolo has cancer. <laughs> it's a Ryan song. What is... <laughs> Would you? Do you think you'll uh, have a good uh, a farewell speech, Preston, on your last day? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll have something. Yeah, you have like to. we when we did the the uh, Radio Hall of Fame, I you know I didn't get emotional at that at all, and we mm -hmm. kept it kind of short. And I was actually kind of nervous to be honest, because we were in front of other. Hey, you did a great job, radio though. professionals. Yeah. But um, mine will have to be quick because um, I'll be escorted out by security with a box <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> the box, <laughs> please leave. <Yeah. laughs> I I I wrote I jotted down the stuff. It was the first time I employed the. I'm up there with my phone method, yeah. you know, which everyone does now. Everyone yeah. goes up with their phone and has a speech on it. I had a whole speech written, and I scrapped it at the last second. Oh, what? really? What? Yep. For the Radio Hall of Fame? Yep. Why? I, I didn't, didn't know that. I didn't like what I wrote down. Really? Today, I am the luckiest man alive. Yeah. <laughs> Gary. Gary. Oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> yep. So I just I winged it, and uh, yeah, decided to change change things. Wow. Up. I want what they want. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't you! Yeah. <laughs> I know none of you like me much neither. 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 I can't help but reflect upon my battle with a Russian boxer <laughs> in front of the Kremlin. What? That didn't happen. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, Kelsey did a, he did a great job. He, 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 you know, like he's always done. He's, yep. he's said the right things. Had I not gone to that small town in the mountains where I was mistreated and eventually had to burn it to the ground, <laughs> my life would have taken a different path. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, anyhow, thank you for the calls. I apologize to those who are on hold for a long time. Jake, I'm sorry. He had a great story about his dad who unfortunately Aww. died of a, of a brain tumor. And every time he hears someone with that same tumor, he can't go on. Of course. That type of thing. It makes and perfect very sense. Very much so. But, um, yeah, this was uh, the... the Announcement yesterday was very, very emotional, and so it should be. Absolutely. No. All, All right. my years in radio <laughs> prepared me for battle in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break because we do have You're a... You're going to need more radio bags. Friend is going to be joining us. Uh, Daniel Roebuck uh, will be on the show. We'll get into some other things, too. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you, Kathy. Our next guest is on the line, and he is ready to go with us via Zoom this morning on mm -hmm. to talk about a, uh, a movie that actually he and his daughter created. Yes. Um, and it's called Lucky Louie. It is now available for streaming on uh, Google Play, Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV as well. Of course, we've known him for years and talked about things like Lost and The Fugitive and River's Edge and all these great projects he's been a part of. Looking a little shaggy this morning <laughs> in Big Bear, California, our friend Daniel Robot. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. I'm so happy to see you guys, or even virtually. I love you guys. Oh, uh, right thanks, back, Dad. We love you too. And are you? Is this a vacation home you're at, or where are you right now? Yeah. Well, I thought I'd show off a little. So I'm in Big Bear doing a, a fun movie called "How to Kill Your Family for how, Christmas." How to kill your family for Christmas? <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Uh, it's. It doesn't sound like such a good idea sometimes. Uh, yes, it does. And, and may we assume because of the beard that you're, are you playing St. Nick? Well, here's the thing. There's, we've got some footage to share with you if you guys have it. So I've, I'm in this phase. Who would have thought? I'm actually my, my grandfather. I think it started with grandpa. My <laughs> grandfather's Santa face. So where <laughs> I'm... My beard is like this because I'm doing a TV show, which I wish I could tell you guys about. Oh. And I had to look like the character looked uh, in earlier episodes seasons ago. Wow. So I feel old, but I, we did a movie called St. Nick of Bethlehem. We shot half of it. 
with Philly favorite Kathy Moriarty. I know everybody loves her. Yeah. Uh, myself, Marsha D. Line. So uh, we shot that in the Lehigh Valley right before Christmas. Then I went and did Scrooge at the Andy Griffith Playhouse. Uh, so I shaved my beard. Then I had to grow my beard back for the TV show. And now I have to shave my beard again because it'll never match the length. So, all right. We're very excited about this TV show. Is there anything, even peripherally, you can give us about what the show, the nature of the show, anything? Here's what I could say. I know there's billboards out of the show, hmm. and I I know it's a it's a a show moving from one network to another. All right, and uh, and it's pretty spectacular. Okay. You sign these NDAs, and I even asked. I said. President Steve, <laughs> let me talk about this. People will be excited. Yeah. You, you, you know, it's, uh, I know, I know it's it's silly. Anyway, uh, yeah. uh, I do want to tell you there's a big, another horror movie coming up uh, that I can't talk about either, in which I'll also be playing Santa Claus. So I'm in a Santa phase. All okay. right. Well, Santa right. Phase. You're also a little, little I, there's a little bit of Ernest Hemingway going on there too. Oh, I like that. Yeah, a little I've got the... I should get out there with my boat to yeah. catch a fish. <laughs> old right. man in the sea right yeah. behind you there. Or old man hey, in the lake. What is... Uh, the old man in the lake. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Lucky Louie, but as your all years of, in acting, what physical thing have you had to do that most stuck with you? Sometimes people will have to shave their head or they'll have to gain or lose a lot of weight or do some kind of a physical transformation. Have you ever been asked to do something that was like, wow, this is going to be a process? Uh, you know, I would I would say sitting in the makeup chair to play Jay Leno for yeah. Grandpa Munster. Yeah, uh, and you know everybody comments on this this great actor that kid who played uh, Elvis, and yes. they said he's still talking like Elvis. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that doesn't surprise me. I I still yeah I still talk like Grandpa, and that was <laughs> two and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, well, did you carry some Leno when you were done with that? Because when you when yeah, you get I brought him Leno around, I thought about doing stand up after that. I thought, <laughs> so no, they gave me his face. They didn't give me his talent. Right. Uh, so I thought I thought better of that. So go ahead, Russ. Well, we mentioned uh, Lucky Louie at the top. This is the project that uh, obviously you want to get the word out about. And you and your daughter, if I read this correctly, wrote both wrote and directed it, co-directed and co-wrote yeah. it. We did. What a what a marvelous and unique experience for a father and a daughter to have. We're driving to the set the first day, Preston, and she says to me, "Hey, I just thought of something. If we both wrote it and we're both directing it, if we disagree, who wins?" And I thought, Jesus, I, I spent one hundred seventy thousand dollars on this kid's education. It's wacky. I said, I win. Well, why would you win? Because I'm your father. I'm the only one who's directed a movie before, and I've been in one hundred fifty. How many of you been? Yeah. yeah. None? Shut up. Uh, <laughs> no, that's we're, right. We're, we're writing another one now together. We're have we have a blast. She's. Such a blessing to me. So is Buster, my son. They're both great kids. But it's interesting. Buster's so much like his mother. And Crazy, oh, she realized one day that she was so much like me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's funny because uh, watch your career. And I, you're doing the things that I think, you know, you have the longevity because also you've, you've diversified. You're, you're doing the, um, you got a horror movie coming up. You got this other stuff going on. You've done work in the video game realm as, as well. And um, do you think that's the key, um, you know, to 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 success if you're going to be in the entertainment business to do what you're doing is is to diversify a little bit and have a number of different irons and various fires? I, I certainly do believe so. I think it's a new world that we live in. I, I get cringy. I've been writing this book for actors. I'm almost done. The audition is the job and other truths that I've learned in the land of make believe. And and the new thing that, that they're trying to teach these poor actors coming out of college is they say, what's your brand? You got to know your brand. You got to sell your brand. And I think, geez, my first movie, Cave Girl, I was a nerd. <laughs> Second movie, uh, I killed the girl in the river's edge. Yeah. Third movie, I was a punk rocker. Fourth thing, I think I was in the Air Force. Then I went to World War II. What's my brand? My brand is I'm a paper doll. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yes. You put the other thing on me. My brand is I play anything. But as for writing and directing, I've been doing it in the theater for so many years, but it does turn out, I think, that God 
and I'm not, this is, I don't say this flippantly, has blessed me with an ability. I think the movies we're turning out are extraordinarily joyful. Uh, this one that's available now, uh, Lucky Louie, you can get it on Apple, you can get it on Amazon, you can order it at Walmart, you can, it's everywhere. And these are the movies we're making through the not-for-profit. Uh, a channel of peace, and you know, and you know, there's a there's a good place for these movies now. So obviously, you got your you got your other stuff, but and tapping in, I'm not saying this cynically. There's a whole bunch of people looking. For, uh, l listen, I am a sucker for for Hallmark movie uh, the Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm I'm a sucker for a, a feel good. You know, it's going to make you you make you entertained, but yet you're not going to feel down or bad at the end of it. I think everyone responds to that. I'm I'm, I'm reading the review of uh, of uh, Lucky Louie, a uh, film threat says um, it's uh, cleverly written, cleverly edited, includes a strong helping of detective fiction and has a good heart. So that's that's going to make well, you feel good to hear that. Yeah, I, I the thing about, the, I'd like to think of, I'm making, you know what we're all missing? An Andy Griffith show episode. So these movies I make, I would liken them to, you're going to sit down, you're going to be entertained. And, and, you know, I'm upfront about what I'm preaching, which is a godly relationship. Right. Uh, we've got Hollywood working against that right now, respectfully. Uh, I say that because I work in Hollywood a lot. But, you know, they're putting so much messaging in movies, it's turning people off. So here's a movie. All you have to do is turn off, turn off your, just come in and have a, sit down, have an entertaining, entertaining movie. The, uh, you, the, you know, we did that St. Nick of Bethlehem. One of the reasons that we ended up shooting it is because Hallmark made a movie called The Miracle of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and they shot it in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, no, no. <laughs> you can't do you that. Know, you, you, you know, you guys have a huge following in the Lehigh Valley. Yeah. Uh, and they should all tap in when, when I say this. <laughs> like, I went, we had a press conference and I... You know, I mean, I like Hallmark like you. I like Hallmark, but I, I don't think we should be making movies about Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. In, in Winnipeg, yeah. yeah. Well, Danny, you know, re referencing the Lehigh Valley, you made Getting Grace there, and, and I wanted to ask you about uh, that movie and um, your acting uh, process because we were talking earlier about Jason Kelsey and sort of crying through speeches, and, and it was a really emotional thing for him yesterday. Uh, Getting Grace is a, a beautiful movie shot locally, and it made me cry while watching it. Um, where do you go emotionally when you feel like you need to emote like that? When you have to do something that's heavy or crying, like how does how does a Daniel Roebuck um, pull out the tears? Nick, thank you for asking. I wish that I could tell you that I'm a genius actor. The truth is, it goes back to whatever God has given me. Um, I have an ability to tap in when when I'm writing. I get overclimped at something that I write, <laughs> and then I know I like I think, oh, that's it. If I'm getting verklempt writing it, oh. and I'll tell you, I sit with audiences, I watch these movies, I swear to you, when I got emotional, the audience gets emotional. Because the character is playing that that uh, that emotion, and I've, I've, if I've, one of the writer to co-writers, like I was on, with Jeff Lewis on, on uh, Getting Grace, I knew that script, and I knew that story inside and out. And I knew that the character... I, I keep writing these characters who are flawed. And so there's a moment where they have a coming to Jesus, but not an altar call. They have a coming to Jesus moment within themselves where they've got to deal with this stuff, you know, uh, honestly. And it, it becomes very raw. Um, um, go ahead. I was just going to finish with, you know, it, it is kind of what's hard about it, acting is so much fun. But I did an episode of... Uh, CSI New York, where I had to hear essentially that my son died. Right. And you shoot it, you know, 12 times from 12 different angles. Mm -hmm. And that moment of of shock, which I chose to play as I could barely stand, like you think if someone said that to you about your children, your family, you know, you could, you want to vomit, you know. They're yeah. like, so it is hard to give them that. I kind of do tune out the world. Uh, anyway, that's the end of my no, 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 it's fascinating. That's we're we're, we're fascinated by that capability. Yeah. Have you ever been around an actor whose process impressed you so much that you was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm watching this person transform? Because you've been around some pretty heavy hitters. Mm. It's it's so true. I'll tell you what happens. You start watching the movie. Like, you're working with the actor. <laughs> now, yeah. I would say, this happened to me a lot with Andy Griffith. Yeah. I would be watching him, 
And then I just, you know, let it be my line. And I was like, oh, I was watching the movie. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Andy Griffith is, like, I, I, watch, I watch the Andy Griffith show all the time. I have all throughout my life. That is a perfect sitcom. And and the and the the exchanges between Andy and Barney oh my God. in the in the in the, the police uh, office, you know, right there, yeah. right at the desk, just having casual conversations. Mm -hmm. Some of the most brilliant, subtle exchanges that seem so real, uh, and I, I, it, it's it's such an elusive thing. So you're you've been a longtime fan of uh, besides oh, yes. Matlock work. I, 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 I'd love to use this opportunity to actually tell people they can kind of visit if they go to visit Mayberry.com, it'll it'll take them to Andy Griffith's hometown of Mount Airy. And uh, every year now, I, there many of the Andy Griffith actors have sadly passed away, except the kids. Uh, I Clint Howard's in one of these movies I'm making next. Uh, anyway, uh, that was a little <laughs> you remember Clint as as Leon. Yes, but, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, you can visit, you could go to Mount Airy, Andy Griffith's hometown, and you could ride a squad car tour. You could see Andy's house. You could see where Andy went to school. Uh, they built a little uh, courthouse that you could take photos in. Uh, and it's beyond everything else. The people are great. I I work for the Surrey Arts Council when I, I can. I do the uh, Mayberry Days, which is in September. And that's where I play Scrooge. At, like, imagine that I got to go the Andy Griffith Playhouse and play Scrooge in the same stage that he performed on when he lived in Mount Airy. It was that's pretty awesome. Now, in, in this, uh, in Lucky Louie, the cast, uh, Stephanie Zimbalist is, is in the uh, oh, terrific. We so love her. A lot of people, her, her father was Ephraim Zimbalist, uh, who was yes. uh, the star of a show that I loved, FBI. Uh, I am I'm sure you were a fan uh, as well. I loved it. Sure, <laughs> yes. Did you did you talk to her a little bit about her dad? All the time. Yeah, she loved her dad. What a, an extraordinary family that was. You know, her mother was uh, her mother was a concert uh, pianist or something. Her grandparents were they were that was a famous family. They came out of Russia. They were already famous in 1902. Hmm. So it's you know, and Stephanie is the most erudite. Is that a negative word? I hope no. That's <laughs> she's, she's bright. She's smart. She. I literally will be. I will call her and I'll say. Tell me again, is it lie or lay? <laughs> like uh, she's the only human being who knows this stuff, and it's very important to her that she. So we get in the bad habit of then she starts correcting my regular text. I'm like, yeah. I'm not asking no, for no. advice. <laughs> I'm using voice to text. I, I, yeah, I just needed it that one time. So g give us a little uh, thumbnail of what uh, Lucky Louie is about. Lucky Louie is such a joyful movie. It's about an old retired cop, uh, played by Basil Hoffman, who was in so many. Uh, Best Picture nominated movies. Uh, and Basil Hoffman couldn't ever solve one bank robbery. So in the course of the movie, a, a forensic psychology major played by Madeline Dundon, who played Grace in Getting Grace, ah. shows up and um, and she's been assigned the case Bucknell. She's a psychology major at Bucknell. She's been assigned the case. Uh, and so uh, he teams up with his Bible study which are all four ex-criminals that he arrested and rehabilitated as this forensic psychology major. And they try to figure out who robbed the bank. And then at one point, our lead character gets ill and I'm one of the convicts. And I say, well, why don't we just rob the bank again? <laughs> and then we'll know where the money went. Right. Uh, and that's essentially what we do. We do like the town gets into it and they're cheering and, you know, filming as we rob the bank a second time. <laughs> uh, it's just, that's great. Like nothing, nothing like it came out of you guys. Came out of COVID. Came out of me sitting at home and then one day saying, "I just can't have the government tell me that I can't create art." Yeah, I don't. You know, it's too much. They've too much. They've overreached. So that's why Lucky Louie was born. It didn't exist except for COVID, and it's the miracle of COVID in our in our world. Now, is your your daughter on board with you? Is this a Side thing for her? Is she fully uh, involved in the entertainment industry as well, acting and she is, filmmaking? She's she doesn't act. She doesn't want to act, although she's beautiful. She should, uh, and she's nuts. So she's like every other actress I met. <laughs> don't write me letters. That's almost a joke, but not really. Um, but uh, yeah, she's 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 well versed. She wants to be a showrunner. That's okay. her dream, right. and that's good for dad. You know because. I, I think that of all the people who might or might not give me a part, 
my daughter will not like <laughs> pass the, uh, the more famous yeah, guy. Yeah, uh, how much did you spend on her education again? <laughs> yeah, yeah hundred seven. <laughs> but I will tell you, they were she was driving across the country with my father, and I got a call, and my dad said, "Ask your father what you just asked me," and she said, "I don't know what the big deal is. I just asked is West Virginia the capital of Virginia?" <laughs> and, and I thought. <laughs> What seventy grand? Did I pay that? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, hilarious. Oh so I goodness. have to ask you because I know uh, we we geek out on on the collectibles. You're a big collector uh, of stuff, and I, I I don't know if I ever asked this question. You've been on some really amazing sets. Did you get something from the set of the Fugitive? Did you take? Have you are, are you the kind of guy who yeah, clips from the Bob Fugitive? I got I got one of the papers we handed out. Now there's so many copies of them, but I got one of the original papers that had Harrison's picture on it. Oh, cool. Uh, I took the entire costume from uh, the Munsters. I mean, that was <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I asked for it in the contract. They said no. And then, you know, I said to Rob, I'm leaving with that. Uh, yeah, good, good, good. Because, look, it makes sense that I had it anyway, just in case there was a reshoot. What were they going to go to the Indiana Jones warehouse in right. Budapest to try to find it? Right. No, oh, better I have it. <laughs> Anything else from the uh, from the movies? <laughs> Uh, you know, I grab a little here and there <laughs> of this show. We've been doing this. I'm trying to I'm going to ask them for one of the costumes of the show that we're doing now, only because I think one day, I don't know if people might want they get a kick out of seeing it, you know, because yeah. you wear the costume for a month. Yeah. Well, you, you let us know when we you let us know immediately when that can be revealed what you're a part of. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, I, I certainly will. And you guys are so good to us. Uh, our summer movie uh, is Man of Granite. It's a movie about four grumpy old men who do the honor guard at a local memorial cemetery oh. and a young uh, jerk kid who's adjudicated into the cemetery uh, by a judge and uh, how they change the kid and the kid changes them. Wow. Uh, I love those types a of stories. Lovely, uh, lovely idea of a movie, I think. And we're looking forward to doing that. If people want to be part of that at all, they can go to channelofpeace.org. All right. And listen, before we wrap, um, happy birthday, by the way. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Anything special I, I, that you did? Well, we do. I was working. And yeah. you know what? I think that because God gave me this gift when I work on my birthday, that's his gift to me. All right. Uh, is, so I other people want to take off. I want to be on a set on my birthday working. You know, I'm going to, we, I, that, we're going to send you a poster that says, when in Virginia, visit our capital, West Virginia. <laughs> That's our gift to you. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. I, I can't. And when I come to you, I've got, you know, there's some toys I have to bring you. Oh, guys. yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. We're all for that. All right. Lucky I'll Louie. I'll see you when I come in person. Out right. now. Uh, you can catch it on the streamers, Google, uh, Amazon, and uh, Apple TV as well. It's great to check in with you, Daniel. Good luck with everything. All right. God bless all you guys and your listeners. We'll see you soon. You got it. Dan Robot, yeah. guys. Yeah. Awesome. He's a nice guy. Love chatting with him. So uh, lucky, Lou. And then he's, it says here he's in a, the upcoming horror, horror film called Hunting for the Hag. Yeah, it's about So a, I didn't know if that was one of those that he couldn't mention I didn't or not, know either. But, I wanted um, to ask him about it. Yeah. I know what he's not allowed to mention. You do? Yeah. Are uh, you allowed to mention it? I, no, because gonna, well, he told you, right? Um, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Yeah, but. I can do what I want. Not um, if he told you, don't. Mm. We don't want to get him in. No, 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 no. He's still on the line. He's yeah. still on the All Zoom. Right. We're gonna, All we're, I'm we're not saying gonna let him in is uh, <laughs> if you're driving on Oh, wait. 95. No, hang on. He's not done. Go ahead. Okay. What were you going to say, Daniel? No, I just said don't say it, Casey. I'll leave you guys. <laughs> All right. See? All right. We'll see you. There's, okay. a, there's a billboard right, yeah, for a TV show. That's all I'm going to say. There's okay. A bill you saw in, a in the area? For a TV yeah. Show. All right. And it's, uh, that's all. Okay. okay. That's, that's it. All. That's all. Yeah. He's doing. Perfect. Yeah, that's he mentioned uh, he mentioned what uh, what Hollywood is bringing us in that interview, and it made me think of something real quick that I wanted to pass along. So uh, I went to see Dune twice. Okay. So over the weekend, I went and saw it once when we were in Scranton for Cardboard Classic, and the theater that I went to was kind of like a movie tavern type of theater. You could eat and everything there, but there no trailers, not one, nothing. It went boom Love straight that. to the movie. I'm like. This is fantastic. Yeah. I thought, well, maybe that's what they're doing with this because the movie's two hours and 45 minutes long. Maybe they're just foregoing the, the trailers. And I went to see it in King of Prussia on Sunday. No, trailers. Like 30 minutes worth of trailers. Oh, my God. And watching the trailers, and I know that they target the type of movie that you're going to see with ads that are going to yeah. appeal to something like that. 
But I turned to my friend Brian, who went to the movie with me, and I lean and I go, you realize for the last 20 minutes, we've been watching the world end oh. over and over and over <laughs> no and over. Yeah. I mean, like, every trailer was death and destruction. Apes have taken over the planet. There's a giant lizard that's destroying the planet. There are demons that are coming in to destroy the planet. I mean, it was just one after another. It was overload, man. Yeah, and it's there's a cotton line, and there's a lot of people, um, you know, trying to figure out how to get a lot of it back. And and um, that's why, like, uh, like we talk about horror saving a lot of Hollywood. And, and we had a discussion um, about, you know, can Deadpool, this Deadpool and Wolverine, yeah. be what brings Marvel back? Maybe. Because that's the idea, is to re revitalize that. But then you also look, Preston, for every one of those movies, like Coda, these, these, oh, these gems that small. come out. Yeah, you got to check those out, too. Yes. And you're obviously, you rave on Dune, oh. uh, the second Dune movie. I, I will go see it a Nerds third in time. Paradise. Yeah, third <laughs> Nerds in Paradise. <laughs> I'll go see it again. By the way, the uh, the movie with um, Nick, who's the really beautiful uh, girl du jour blonde that you love. Sydney um, Sweeney. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sydney Sweeney. She's at Steve. The trailer for her next movie, it's a religious-based movie. Uh, it is called um, Immaculate... Uh, Immaculate, yeah, I think, I think. It, yeah, yeah. But it it it's the imagery reminds me of the fake trailer in the beginning of Tropic Thunder oh for God. the movie <laughs> with Tobey Maguire and <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Uh -huh. Now it's a horror movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. but parts of it just the the close up shots of all these little. <laughs> You know, uh, Catholicism right, right, uh, yeah. symbols and stuff just are they, totally they're, remind they're me side of by that. side praying. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I want you. Yeah, uh, and he's grabbing the rope around his uh, yeah. around his oh tunic. God. It's hilarious. So, uh, Deadpool and uh, Wolverine—that's the only Marvel movie that's going to be released this year. Yes. Uh, Preston, you went and saw Dune twice. Um, and and Steve, I don't disagree with you at all. I love movies like Coda, but I don't think that I will go to the theater to see. That's them. a good point. You know, and so I, I'm at the even like Captain Marvel, which I, I was kind of—I mean. Uh, the Marvels. I was underwhelmed by. I didn't pay to go see that in the theater either. I'll see. I'll go see Dune for sure. Yeah, uh, and I'll see Deadpool and Wolverine. But I don't. I don't think there are many other ones that are going to bring me to the theater. Nick, that's what they're trying to figure out because one of the, the one of the things I think they regret the most out of every way that they reacted to COVID was the sh shunting it right into the into the home viewing quickly. In other words. Um, like, for example, uh, I think they're going to return to, this is what they're saying, uh, you know, a bigger space between the release of the film and it getting into the home streaming thing. They 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 killed a number of movies. So they, they tried to re-release um, Red, right? Yeah. Um, a, a, a back into the theaters. Oh, yeah. But they kind of shot their load because yeah. they, they had it streaming and in the theaters at the same time. Right. And that sort of killed it. I happen to have a good setup at home, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of times I'll just default. But sure. listen, I want to see Dune on, on a huge screen. Yeah, yeah. and it, then also I need to, there are certain movies that I have to see in the theater because I will not have my phone out. And Dune is that one where would, I'm like... Would Coda be one? Would, uh, you, would you, if you no, want to... Really, okay. No, no, but... Um, uh, no, because it also kind of has to be uh, like a bigger spectacle. Like uh, Top Gun Maverick did that. They they could have released it whenever, and they were like, nah, they held we're, we're, we're going to do this in the theater. Yeah. So so th is is the perception f for all of you that it, it's it's got to be a theater exploiting movie for you to go first, out to the movies? First, it's got to be. In other words, either that or just something that I that that is so highly anticipated. I just can't wait for it to get to my house. I, I need to go see this now as soon as it, the first available thing, you know, but I hear like you. Dune was that, and not only in its scope, but just because I love the story. Would a know? comedy, would a, like a, a wedding crashers or something where you have the communal laughter, yeah. would that incite you to go to a theater? It's got to be the right one, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got to, and, and I, unfortunately, I can't tell you what that is. To I, be, I don't know. To be honest, again, I find myself, because of this, because people have bigger TVs now, and mm -hmm. I, I'm all set up, I'm good, and I have a rocking setup. Uh, you know, it, the last what was the last um, movie that I went to see in the theater. Um, <laughs> was it Maverick? Uh, mine was, I think, probably Bar Barbie. Barbie. Um, okay, but yeah, I just I, I touched on something that I'd never really thought of before, which is going to see a movie in a theater to ensure that I don't have my phone out. Yeah. 
because I, th- that I bet is, there's people that are that uh, that are similar in I mind. Can't. That's I, a I, big I, thing for me. I, oh, listen, I, I just watched even at home, case yeah. I had the lights come down. I am locked and loaded. I, I am not distracted. I don't even like a little bit of light peeking yeah. in. Clearly, I want that theater experience. Yeah, clearly you've never played Tune Blast because <laughs> that <laughs> thing is. But um, yeah, so I'm glad I ended up watching the first Dune movie over again because, you know, I watched it before when it first came out. And I'm watching this. I'm like, I don't remember any of this. And it's probably because I was watching it with my phone in my hand. Huh? It's possible. It's I, a- I have to share this with you guys, by the way. So the, so, uh, the person that I went with, Brian, uh, we're really good friends. Uh, he had been anticipating the movie as well, but he had to rewatch it because he had forgotten a lot about you know so the first film. Did he like the first one a lot? Yeah, he liked yeah. it. Uh, I don't know how much he liked it, but we're watching the movie. This is my second yeah. viewing. We get done, and I'm almost like, so? <laughs> oh, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and and I, you know what I get from him? Oh, it's good. <laughs> oh, that's underwhelming. I'm like, people. oh my god! I'm like, and and I bit my tongue. I'm like, it's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen in my life. I get all this. <laughs> and and the main reason I'm not and listen, I get that he has his own opinion, and yeah. what entertains him may not entertain me. But I wanted so much to geek out on it right. with somebody. I wanted to talk my head off to it, and I just got nothing. I had to sit the whole ride home just. Like, that's the time, and maybe like, that's damn what, it. what that worm popcorn bucket is for to slam it over the head of the person who doesn't like no, it. No, yeah. I wasn't. I was okay. not angry at him at all. Right, all right. Not but at all. you want to, I know what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, somebody to talk so to it about it. I have somebody who does that with restaurants. Like, we'll leave and I'm like, that was so good. And they're like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm like, did you taste the, like, whatever? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I'm not saying it wasn't, but like, you, I want to them to be like, yeah. yes, I loved it too. I'm yeah. not saying that that you know that this is automatically that there there and, and that Brian is this person. Some people are sort of contrarians, and they they want to gravitate towards eh, yeah yeah huh, yes. Huh. Oh, okay. And I think that is this yeah. person. It's like, okay, but yeah. okay, you son of a bitch. I mean, but don't you come to me with a restaurant you love because I'm going to tear it apart. <laughs> I can be that person about some things, yeah, yeah. absolutely, where I'm like, oh, you like it? Well, I don't like it. You <laughs> know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but for this, it was just me personally. It was uh, huge. And uh, and and when I heard he was interested, I was like, great. I'm going to have great. somebody that I can nerd out with <laughs> on this. And You're yeah. killing me. Yeah, that's good. You're tearing me apart. <laughs> what you want is when they walks out of the theater, like, dude. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank right. you. And I've done that with you guys because we've yeah. been. When, and you've when, also been the other way yeah. too. You know, with like, hey man, you you, you, you watched it? Did you like it? Yeah. You're like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was all right. It was all right. It just it didn't really speak. You to me. want yeah. the guy yeah. that you're with to go? Let's dock. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's how I right now. now. I, I have underwhelmed you. I've never you. done it, but damn yeah. it, I want to do I'm it so now. I'm so turned on by this movie. Yeah. I have underwhelmed you with so many things that, that it brought me joy <laughs> that when you liked Ted Lasso, I was like, I think I'm going to cry. Yeah. Well, listen, a lot of times that's music, and, and yeah. you'll bring stuff to me, and you'll and you really sell it hard, and then I'm just like, oh, man, yeah. I don't... I don't know. I don't really yeah. like it. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> and I feel bad reacting that yeah. way. There uh, might be one. You know, at some point, like, the case yeah. is going to get through, and it's going to be oh. Cold War Kids. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's going to be Teddy Swims. That's my new guy. Teddy, Teddy Swims? Teddy, Teddy Swims. Swims. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pre- oh, Preston's oh, a hard Teddy sell on music, yeah. and, and that's not your fault, Kate. It's not your fault, son. Uh, Don't you do this to me, man. <laughs> Not you, Sean. Uh, yes, I am. I am a hard sell on music. Uh, I'm a big music fan, but I'm, I've kind of, I've, I've gotten to where I'm, I'm in my lane, you know, and I just yeah. kind of like to stay there. Do you? So, so I know <laughs> you like what you like. Yeah. I know. I know. We're looking at Teddy Swims. You already what hate him. <laughs> you already hate Teddy Swims. You haven't even heard him yet. This, this, this guy. What, what is it? It looks like Teddy's, he's got scales all over. Him. That's what is t- it? Well, those are tattoos. Oh, uh, he looks like an upholsterer. He's a musician. He's a musician. He's okay. a singer. I don't know if he actually plays any instruments, but uh, his oh, I big, can tell uh, by looking at this dude. I don't like him. Man. You're gonna love him. You're gonna love him. He's uh, his song "Lose Control" is oh, the one that's kind of hitting stop, right stop, now. Casey, stop. You're, this is yeah. you're ruining. Yeah. You yeah. already yeah. ruined it. You're, you just told him he's gonna love it. Gonna so now, he by the way, Kathy, time out. Time out. Could, could you debut with the worst picture to introduce Preston to <laughs> Teddy? Yeah, I mean, what he looks like? Who, who did that? You guys ruined it He looked like he looked like a guy who didn't make the cut of uncut gems. No, the one with the hat on with with the denim hat that one maybe that would have got Preston yeah. right All Preston right. maybe that time out I'm gonna tell you this right now Preston when he hears lose control he's not gonna like it it's yes, okay. we it's, know it's, that. It's, it's not do you have it on your phone? Uh, I do. Oh, I we're do. gonna do this now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Might man. as well get it. Let's rip that band-aid. Oh jeez. I would prefer the he has a really great um 
Sandwich? Was, he's got a really good oh. sandwich. Let's hear it's, more about the sandwich. Called, it's called the Dar. No, uh, no, he was just in uh, in London, and he okay. was performing on the streets doing a, a, right. a cover of Gnarls Barkley Crazy. I would prefer he heard I that, like that first so because he knows that song. I think you've played that for me. Did I? I think you did. Can yeah, go ahead, it? though. So quick question. Do you want? Do you need mood here? Should we bring down the lights a little bit? Are you good? Ooh. Turn on the disco lights. Uh, All right. No, it's not a disco lights type of song. Okay. Are you sure? No. By the way, while, while he's pulling that up, I'll kill time with this, because Kathy, somebody texted and said they don't like going to the movie theaters because they think the theaters are dirty. Um, <laughs> All right. Bring some I don't disagree with, with you. you. Yep. Does, it, does that deter you from going to a movie theater? Um, No, it's like a plane. Like, you just have to bring, yeah, you just have yeah. to bring a, a white with you. And, yeah. And just kind of sanitize the the arms. Okay. Yeah, that's All okay. Right. All right. All right. We're ready. Who is this again? What's his name? This is Teddy Swims. Teddy, Teddy Swims. Swims. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me do this right. Um, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Swims. Okay. Something's got a hold on me lately. Though yeah. I don't know myself. You played this guy for me. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, hang on. Turn up a little bit. Yeah, he's got a real soulful voice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Have you heard him yet, Kev? No, it's just press his voice. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, he's got a soulful voice. It's all right. Do you think you could grow into this if you were to explore a little bit? Has the door been opened yeah. to walk into the room? No, probably I'd have to. This is like, I, I'd like... Listening to this right off the bat, I'm like, he just sounds like a good soul singer. Yeah. I don't hear, oh my God. Here. That's all. Do you know what I think? Yeah, you, so could, you could end up with sort of a, a, a quasi somewhat male Amy Winehouse. So well, listen, a lot yeah. of people can do that. You just, you know, you were like, oh, yeah, you want to hear him to do that, that run, which yeah. is uh, great. It's impressive. Uh, but a lot of people I, can do the, it. The song's got to, yeah, a lot of people can do it. The song's got to speak to me. Yeah. Right, you know, so is so, that the guy that, like, after the show, you're like, I can't believe Casey told me about this guy's one more night. <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, can I, he can won't I, leave me alone. Are you going to the bathroom? Can I go with Did you? Did I say that? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, oh my God. God. Again. He's, he's, he's pumping this crap at me. I can't take it. He keeps oh, trying. I, I, will, I don't like any of them. I will I'm say I'm trying this. to be nice to him. And then on yeah. air, I know I'm going to be nice, but I'm not really, I don't care. I, I can't stand it. What were you going to say? I just wanted him to finish his joke. Okay. And then later on, Casey will be with her. We, we actually did mock him at the top kill of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, then later on, it'll be like, Steve out of the room, he doesn't participate in anything. <laughs> uh, where are we? Ooh, I don't know. Where okay. do we uh, Kyle McCartney. McCartney. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle McCartney. It's Kyle McCartney. <laughs> well, I was, I was on your birthday. I wanted to make sure this is the first time you met your long lost brother from Liverpool. Kyle McCartney. Uh, Kyle actually saw him in concert. He says he was the best uh, vocalist he's ever heard live. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's with the FM band. Yeah. And it's uh, his birthday. And it's, and his it's Kyle's birthday, birthday today. You cannot, so. you cannot turn down the request of a, a, a pub singer. On his but like you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Amy Winehouse. Like the first time I listened to that, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, this is, this is something else. This is something you liked different. It, right? This is amazing. It spoke yeah. To you. So that spoke to me. And that was like years after the album had come out. I was like, I was like, man, I saw this stuff. I'm, I'm going to go listen to her. And I listened to that album. I'm like, whoa, that blew me away. So I'm not impervious. No. And to, it might get there. To that. Was that your last like blown away first listen kind of a thing that you can remember anyway? Oh, I don't know. What was, so was Dune, the recent Dune, your most recent blown away right into a movie? Yeah. So I'm. I mean, twice. Like, you know, it's, it's only been out for two weeks or whatever, and you've already seen it twice. But not, not even a week. Not even yeah. a week. Okay. Yeah. We talked about seeing movies in theaters, um, and I was, I was telling Kyle, I actually went to see uh, Schindler's List five times mm. in the theater. Wow. And, and, and I know a lot of people consider that, like, I I emotionally, and it is. It is it's a masterpiece. But for me, it was, it was I, I had to go there mentally, cathartically, you know, and just to see an artist who I really have always admired Return to craft with it with a, that that story, and so but it's weird. Most people go, yeah, Schindler's List, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but um, yeah, uh, uh, what what for you in the theater? How many times? What's your record for returning to the theater to see a movie? Oh, I don't know. Um, I usually don't do it. Yeah. Oh, you don't? Yeah, I don't think no. I've ever gone mm -hmm. to the theater to see 
a movie I've already seen a second time. I, I, I can't say that. It's funny though that I'll okay, I, like I, you'll watch a series three or four, five, six, seven times. Yep. Mm. It shouldn't be alien to me, and yet somehow that is alien to me. Whereas a movie I'll see a hundred and fifty times. Yeah, I think the series that I've watched over the most times is Ted Lasso. I think we went through the whole thing. Or well, let's see. I, d I did Game of Thrones the the entire eight seasons three times through. Ted Lasso, I think we watched five times through. Um, Stranger the, Things. What are the yeah Stranger Things? I've watched all of that at least three times through. Any comedies or sitcoms or anything? Like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Cheers and Seinfeld. I've Small watched so many times. Mm -hmm. Friends. No. Well, a lot of those are easy to like go to sleep to. You do you um. Chris, you don't go to sleep with the TV on, right? You turn that's on, correct turn, on, okay. on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've seen a Jaws on its initial run. I saw it twelve times in the theater. Star Wars, about 10, 12 times. I've seen the the, the one I've seen in the theaters the most. Um, Two thousand one, A Space Odyssey. I'm going to say conservatively. 50 times? I believe it. Yeah, 55 times. I told you that first Dune movie, I know I watched it at least 10 times. Not not the 1980s version. That I've yeah. seen, I don't know how many times, but this, the 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 Jason Momoa. In the theater, though, no. No, not in the theater, right. but I have watched it at least 10, maybe a dozen times. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll yeah. go see this one again in the movie theater, for sure. Take Kathy. <laughs> I saw. So I can't take anybody. I don't know anybody. You, you'll get that reaction. Maybe. Oh case. my god. Yeah. yeah. You can take Andrea. She's uh, that. Yeah. yeah Andrea wants to go way into the Dune world. I I saw the Fugitive twice in the theater, Steve, because the first time I couldn't believe what the hell I was watching. Like it was. Yeah. I was yeah. so blown away by it. But um, yeah. And, and I saw Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves in the theater <laughs> twice. Uh, but that was only because the second time uh, Andy Johnson wanted to go, and I had a huge crush on her. So ah, I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. I'll go see uh, this one. That again. makes total sense. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's all for love. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, um, yeah, we need to take a break. Mm. Come do back and hey watch Do you want to listen to more some uh, Teddy Swims? Sure. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not, not that one. Not, not, why not that one? Because apparently this one's better. Okay. Here we go. Oh, this is the uh, cover. Yeah. yeah. What was that? That sounded like Casey's fart uh, from uh, Smoke on the Water in the background. Did you yeah. hear that? That. Camera. What is that? That's a camera. <laughs> That's <what's>, See? <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. I didn't hear that. That's your soul. <laughs> <laughs> Great voice. <laughs> um, see, now that I like a lot. There you yeah. go. I like the that. The hook is sunk. Well, I like that song. Yeah. Um, he's a great singer, but I need to hear a song I, that I like. Listen, I agree with you. You know what I mean? I think there's amazing um, vocalists out there and th that, that are, you know, chart um, toppers. toppers that just don't write a good song. I think Lauren Hill, and dude, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't kill the messenger. Don't kill the messenger. I, but I, I, I think her songwriting needs a little help, you know, Stinks. or needed a little help. And uh, yeah, I feel the same way about that guy because you do, you go to YouTube. There's a billion. It's like a billion. It's like a billion. Great uh, singers. Great singers and yeah. musicians out there. But yeah. you know, there is, um, I was talking about this very thing with, um, uh, and I don't mean to wander all over the road, but it's what we do. It's what we excel at. Uh, talking about the application of AI, because I've been screwing around with um, learning about um, the different things you can do and the different things you can recreate. And it all comes down to, and I was making this comparison, I was saying this to, uh, to Kyle the other day. You can hand someone the dictionary and say, all the great works of literature are in here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, they are. It's, but it's yeah, put it how you place them. Yeah. It, so how you use the tools right. of AI, what you're doing to create. And somebody brought up a good point. When Adobe Photoshop came out, mm. people were saying, well, that's trickery. That's um, You're yeah. taking people who are not good at maybe perhaps being a photographer and learning how to do all these things and these cheats and these so on and so forth, and you're taking out blemishes and so on and so forth, and there was a big, you know, blowback when that happened. So, it's yeah. how you apply it and how, yeah. at the core, it, for example, did you know that you cannot copyright anything that is created through AI, like a chat, um, 
Didn't know that, no. Yeah, so because what that is doing is it's taking from the World Bank, the accrued collection. And so what it's doing is simply taking bits and pieces out and reconstituting it. So it is is by its very Mm. nature plagiarized. But then I guess the question will be, how do you prove that that was taken from AI? Right. You create, use AI to hunt down the, yeah. the source material. Yeah. You know, but but I mean, it's true. So that's why yeah. legally right now, you can't copyright AI stuff. Can you play your instrument again for us? Wait. I would love we sh- if we could get some recording artist that we know anybody uh, Nick Brass Pearl Jam you have an in <laughs> sure to incorporate to put that sound in some song. Uh, All right, we got- you know who do it? it was, uh, <laughs> Don McCloskey. He would. Yes. yes. He would. He would. If we can get Don McCloskey <laughs> to include. We would much appreciate that, yeah. Don. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, apologies. We'll come back in a second. We'll get to the bizarre files, so stay with us. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre Files. That is brought to you by Monster Mania 58 this weekend in Cherry Hill with Sam Raimi, uh, Katie Segal, John Cleese, and more. Tickets are on sale now at monstermania.net. All right, a stunning mix-up at a Canadian hospital led a family to mourn their son's untimely death until he texted his mother, seemingly from beyond the grave. Hey, guys. Uh, Heather Inslee had already decided to donate the organs of her son, Sean Cox, when she received a mysterious text message from a number that she didn't know claiming to be him. Now, Sean, who was aged uh, 43 years old, had long struggled with addiction and had uh, as, and, and had, as Inslee had believed, just died of complications related to his substance abuse. But he'd also often would text or call from different numbers when he was in contact, as addicts are often wont to do, uh, leaving the woman perturbed. Jeez. Inslee's husband, Bill, told her the text was likely just a sick joke, but when she got another one a few days later, she called the number and heard her son's voice on the other end of the line. Huh. Together with police in Ottawa, Inslee and her husband were able to track him down and confirm that he was indeed alive. When she went to go meet up with him, however, the Ontario woman said she went numb. She said, I thought, oh my God, your funeral is tomorrow. I thought, I'm so happy he's alive, but I just went through all that morning. I paid for a deli platter. On New Year's Day, when a man who had greatly resembled him entered the hospital in Ottawa, a nurse got in contact with his family after having seen him come in a few months prior to an overdose. And because his face was partially obscured by ventilators and his arms, which should have borne tattoos, were covered by thermal blankets, Inslee was unable to tell that the man in the hospital bed was not her son and had unfortunately never considered otherwise. So she identified him. So, wow. So what about the organs? She said he had the same haircut, had the same long lashes, same thick hair. The identity of the deceased man remains unknown, but before learning they had the wrong person, the family had his handprint taken at the funeral home for a memento uh, that may now serve as a means of helping to identify him. Because he died, uh, he had died long enough before the mistake was realized. The unknown man's organs had been donated per Inslee's wishes as well. So That's they're crazy. Out somebody, and they they yeah. still don't know who the dead guy is. Yeah. They're trying to figure that out. It's a pretty wild story. That's an amazing story. Yep. Let's see, a, I got some good stories here. A pair of suspicious looking roller blades whose wheels were infused with cocaine led authorities to seize thousands of dollars worth of drugs from a house in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I'm not so sure about those roller blades. Homeland Security first flagged a suspicious package from Bogota, Colombia containing the roller blades <laughs> uh, that was marked for uh, delivery to a house in Kenosha last week. The <laughs> Customs and Border Patrol assisted as they determined the wheels of the rollerblades were suspicious <laughs> and then subjected them to a number of laboratory tests. Authorities quickly secured a search warrant and then delivered the package to the home. Once residents accepted the cocaine-encrusted skates, a thorough search of the property ensued. 
and they discovered 1,048 grams of cocaine. Wow. Worth about $40,000. They wow. also discovered evidence of an illicit international trafficking scheme in the form of money transfer. So I think if you, whatever's coming from Bogota, I'm sure it's getting the once over. But it was the, uh, it was the wheels that, uh, that tipped them off. A mother ran over a girl and threatened children at a Peoria, Illinois, Illinois park for bullying on Tuesday. Uh, 30-year-old Brandy Gotch drove to West Green Park. She walked over to a group of kids and started a sh uh, shouting match between them. Gotch grabbed a 14-year-old boy, gotcha, gotcha, by the hair and pulled his head back and forth side to side while yelling at him. She then grabbed a sharp stick from her truck and ran after the boy yelling, I'm going to kill you and run you over. Just a sec, I gotta get my sharp stick. Uh, Gotch got into her Silverado with four kids inside, sped toward the 15 kids standing in the park. She went through the park's rock landscape and ran over a 12-year-old girl's ankle. Gotch allegedly kept driving through the park as kids ran for their lives. She then went back to the parking lot and sped off. Uh, part of the incident was caught on a cell phone camera. Police said they tracked her down and uh, arrested her. During Did you guys enjoy the park? An interview with detectives, Gotch said that it started because she saw preteens throwing wood chips at three of her kids and believed one of them punched her 10-year-old daughter. Mm, you got So this starts to get into a gray area yeah, here. Yeah. She said she confronted them and they called her a bitch. So she grabbed one boy and told him not to call her that. She admitted to getting a stick and walking toward another boy who called her a fat bitch, Ooh. but claimed that she never threatened him. Uh, Gotch said the second boy followed her to her truck and started dancing behind it. Mm. She claimed she yelled Stop at, dancing. at him to move, so he did. Police said she admitted to putting the truck aggressively into reverse and then in drive before driving through the park. She said she didn't believe that she ran over the girl, but later said, I hope I didn't. God said her children were being bullied by the group of kids and reported mm. it to the school and police, but nothing was done. So I uh, she's sort of at the end of a rope. Her mugshot looks like the cover of a self-help book. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, she was uh, booked into jail on six counts of endangerment. So she, she, well, I wonder if she'll have a case of just saying she snapped. Have to sort I it mean, out. Clearly, she snapped, but but that there was enough predicate for yeah, it. Yeah, maybe. Know? So they'll have to sort it out with the judge and see what's what. All right, and then. Uh, finally, we'll end with this story. A Colorado Police Department released footage of officers confronting a suspect while he was on the toilet after authorities received reports <laughs> of a burglary in the process. Officers descended on the property around 4 a.m. after an early morning alarm sounded and used a drone to help track the suspect down. Body cam footage shows heavily armed police bust open an interior door to reveal the male suspect sitting on the toilet. And I'll have to paraphrase... <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to paraphrase here, but he said, and I quote, I'm on the crapper, bud. <laughs> Crapper's full. Uh, the suspect said calmly, apparently, as he put his <laughs> hands up. He's like... <laughs> The man then stands up with his hands up and pants still down as he follows the cop's orders to surrender. The alleged perp was taken to jail where he was charged with second-degree burglary, according to the uh, How How much more vulnerable can you be uh -huh. than sitting on the toilet? Yep. and That's that why I always carry a sidearm into the bathroom. Is what I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. I will right, we'll take yet another break. When we return, though, lesson question, trash music news, all that stuff. Stay with us. Mid on 93.3 WMMR. My own worst enemy. Preston's to show. Tuesday morning, that means we have a tattoo for you to win. And it's from Floating World Tattoo and Piercing. Text the word tattoo to 39333. That's all you have to do. And then step back and then wait. And we might draw your name and set you up. They're located on South Street. And they are fantastic artists. And you can check out their artwork at floatingworldtattoos.com or on at Floating World Tattoos. You just do a search on Instagram. You'll be able to check it out. So somebody's going to win that in a little bit. Uh, we have something else to give away right now, though. Lesson question prize. We have a pair of tickets to see Marlon Wayans, who we just spoke to yesterday. He was great. He's playing a gig at the Event Center Live Casino on uh, Friday. So text, or no, call if you know the answer to this. That's what you need to do. Apparently, Taylor Swift is a distant uh, relative to Emily Dixon, Dickinson. Who is Taylor Swift's great-grandfather? 215-263-WMMR. 
You had to have heard that uh, around 7 o'clock this morning. Apparently, Taylor Swift is distantly related to Emily Dixon, Dickinson, who is Taylor Swift's great-grandfather. By the way, that's one name I have trouble saying all the time myself. Emily Dickinson? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. 215-263-WMMR. Call if you know the answer. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Live Casino in Hotel Philadelphia. Live Casino presents comedian Marlon Wayans March 8th. And tickets are on sale now at livecasinophilly.com. What's up this morning, Steve? Well, they met on and then got married after Big Brother. And now Memphis Garrett and Christmas Abbott are parting ways. The two admit they now re- Realize there's more to love than just stupid names. Yeah. Hey! Victoria Beckham arrived at Paris Fashion Week on crutches. The stick thin Beckham reportedly broke her foot in the shower after accidentally dropping a sponge on it. Oh, oh my God. And finally, Terrence Howard, as we you said yesterday, President, ordered to pay close to $1 million on Friday in a federal tax evasion case out of PA. Howard had argued that descendants of slaves should not pay income taxes while the IRS laughed until their sides hurt. And that's your holiday trip. <laughs> we will go to the phone, see if you know the answer to this. Apparently, Taylor Swift is distantly related to Emily Dickinson, who is Taylor Swift's great-grandfather, we wanted to know. And it is... Jane that will check in with. Hi there, Jane. Good morning, which doobie you be? Which doobie you be? You therefore know the answer. Who is her grandfather? That would be Fred Rerun Barry. Yeah. yeah. Nice job, Jane. Hang on. Got yourself tickets to see Mr. Marlon Wayans Friday at the event center, live casino and hotel Philadelphia. It's a 21 and over show. Tickets are on sale now via livecasinophilly.com. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! Hey! Brought to you by Imaginary from Lionsgate Films. A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy that she abandoned him. It's in theaters March 8th. So we'll begin with Aerosmith guitarist Brad Whitford joined Godsmack on stage in mm. Nashville for a collaboration of Dream On. It was just his birthday last week. It, uh, that's right. The week before we were talking about that. And that, that to me is one of Aerosmith's absolute best songs. Yeah, it's a great tune. Both bands are <clears> from Boston and Godsmack's Sully Erna says that it's been surreal getting to know members of Aerosmith over the last few years. He said... They were my childhood heroes for sure. So, And then afterwards, they went out for Boston cream pie and Boston baked beans. It's still humbling and so rewarding to know that we are still living out our childhood dreams. How old is he again? Uh, I don't remember. In his 70s, I believe. Yeah, I mean, most of the most of the band is, right? Yeah. Yep. They also covered the Beatles' Come Together as well. Um, Dave Grohl is scheduled to play solo for the 8th Annual Love Rocks NYC Benefit Concert. Uh, others on the bill uh, include Tom Morello, Lucius, Don Felder, and Martin Short. Martin Short. Yeah. I, it, he is a musician. He's a showman. He's yes. a very much a singer. So Absolutely. Uh, the concert will live stream via Veeps from the Historic Beacon Theater in New York City at 8 o'clock this Thursday. Martin Short was briefly in Dream Theater. Oh, yeah. I had no idea he was a member of that group, the progressive uh, rock yes, group. Yes, yeah. Uh, tickets are $20, and for each ticket sold, the God's Love We Deliver organization will buy two meals for New Yorkers living with severe and chronic illnesses. So it's a great cause. I'm glad to see Don Felder yeah. getting traction because he is so great, and mm -hmm. obviously it didn't end well with the Eagles. Yeah. And then the final story I have for you is Rob Halford says that Judas Priest pays tribute to legendary vocalist Ronnie James Dio and Motorhead singer Lemmy Kilmeister in the closing track to their upcoming album. Halford said, listening to music makes me think about all these beautiful people that we've lost in rock and roll, from Janis Joplin, Kathy's mom, yeah. uh, Mommy. to Ronnie James Dio <laughs> to Lemmy, uh, but also about the fact that music lives forever. Uh, the song is called Giants in the Sky, the album Invisible Shield. No, Invincible Shield. I'd like to bring out the daughter of Janis Joplin, <laughs> Kathy Lamar. <laughs> she, of course, you're all familiar with her story. <laughs> you are? Rob Halford, a big <laughs> fan of her story, heard weekends on MMR here. Yeah.
Sunday morning? Sunday mornings, yes. At uh, yeah. 7. Reminds us of like, uh, sort of a Russian dentist and a, uh, and a, a, a lot of people. The stories, compelling stories, not your usual <laughs> public service crap that you're on Sunday morning. This is, she takes time with this. It's an actual show because she, she gives a rat's ass. <laughs> Who's on this weekend? The Russian dentist. Oh, the Russian oh, dentist. There you go. <laughs> uh, Rob Halford got it right. <laughs> no, she, honestly, this, this is not. Listen, if you've ever listened to the public affairs stuff, this is a wholly other thing. Yeah, no, it's yeah not she's doing a real, doing a real show. Mm -hmm. uh, the song is called <laughs> "Giants in the Sky." Uh, the album "Invincible Shield" will be out on uh, Friday, March eighth. By the way, Marcus does our. Uh, he does our. Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> oh. No, he's he's committed too to doing something. You know, getting, getting the word out. He does the community affairs. I, I think affairs we have some really that's some solid. Not that I wake up and hear it, but I've heard it. At least I know the people that do it. Marcus has won awards. He, he absolutely has. has. He yeah. won an Oscar. No, no he didn't win. He didn't. For the Godfather. No, no. 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 the Godfather. Win an Oscar. Steve, you're way off. Oh yeah. God Almighty. <laughs> Uh, but no, Marcus, uh, he does a great job. Must be something on, on my microphone. The community <laughs> affairs programming. And then uh, that'll be, uh, is that right before her story? Do he better be your lead. I, I love Marcus to death, but I we look so. out for our own. I don't know. I, yeah, I think, right. I think it is. Okay. All right, and that is the last bit of information, music news. Yes, Casey. You know what, though? Because um, you're mentioning her story. It is Women's History Month, is it not? Yes. It and uh, Jackie Bam Bam is now uh, doing That's this. Right. Uh, what you know, What he had done for uh, Black History Month, he's now doing for Women's History Month. Yes. Yeah. So that's all I have to say about that. What is he doing? Uh, featuring Ignoring it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As he do, I, he's playing a featured uh, female artist. Yes, yeah. yeah. And maybe doing some trivia. I don't really know. Maybe. And he's wearing women's clothes. And he's wearing... <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like every other day of the yeah. year. He, yeah. He's actually, we, there are God. so many powerful voices that we talk about. Look look at you. You're a massive fan of Larkin Poe, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this is, he's going to, um, you know, bring the light to that. I, I came around the corner this morning. <laughs> Jackie was here later than usual today. Nick had to go in and slap some audio together yeah. uh, real quick. And mm -hmm. I was walking by the production studio, which is next to the main mm -hmm. uh, 4F uh, main MMR studio. And I see Jackie standing there in what looked like pajamas or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it, he looked like Nick. He's like, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He was well, like so apologizing bad. to well, you. I, I, I was going into his workspace, and but like I had to grab the audio or whatever. And it like, um, yeah, it just it, everything that Jackie owned or half of what he was owned was sprawled out of, uh, in uh -huh. the new studio. And oh. I walked by. I I walked by, and I knew that you were grabbing the audio quick because I'd asked you to get it for me. I knew it had to get done quickly, and I was like, "There's no way it's going to happen quickly with Jackie in there." Because no. and and I know how you get Nick, and I was like, "Oh, I just want to tell you what I think about you, baby." Oh no, I love uh, Jackie so much. By the way, just to as for your point of reference, Jackie show. Show wraps up at midnight. Midnight. So he's that like, was so, six a.m. Yeah. So he's he here, still here for an additional six hours. <laughs> yeah, a full working day. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and and you're right. His the studio is a god awful mess. It's and everything. His, he just is record stuff CDs strewn yeah. all over the floor everywhere. But at that time in the morning, Jackie looks like 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 at a uh, at a well healed beach club with like a 70 year old woman looking for a cabana boy. <laughs> Steve, I felt like I was walking into like Steven Tyler's dressing room. Like there's yeah, yeah, scarves yeah, 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 yeah. strewn about yeah. and, and the yes. CDs and records. So and he, he's very sweet, Nick. He he brought in a cat carrier. He and my wife, you know, yeah. as he talks to your wife and everybody. And, and so um, he brought in this cat carrier and I held it, held it up and I said, who do you think donated? It looks, <laughs> it's like the clothes he wears. It's like, and he goes, yeah. Jackie. Jackie. Yeah, Jackie. black and white yes. spot, yeah, leopard yeah, yeah, spotted. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. All right, so anyhow, we will take a break. We'll come back in a second. We'll wrap up the show, Letter of the Day, Word of the Week, turning it over to Pierre. Stay with us. 1040 uh, and the Preston and Steve show coming to a close. Temperatures hovering around 50 degrees today. Uh, rain. Lightly until probably this afternoon, and then it, uh, we get a little break, and then we have more rain uh, for tomorrow, high 55. A similar thing on Thursday, and then Friday, um, 60, and partly cloudy, so a nice start to the weekend, but still calling for rain on Saturday, too. So we're going to get a bit of that here and there. I would like to thank our guest, Mr. Daniel Roebuck, for being yeah. on the show today. Such um, a great guy. Yeah, he's a friend of the show, and he's a longtime, you know, Hollywood actor and uh, just a busy guy and uh, 
from the Lehigh Valley and loves uh, working in this area and loves checking in and stuff like that. He's got a movie called Lucky Louie, which is out and it's available on a lot of the streamers. Prime, you can check that out. on. So, a super nice guy. And he and his daughter wrote and directed it together, which is a really cool little project. Um, today is Tattoo Tuesday. Why don't we give this thing away? We have a prize for one of our texters who happens to be Michael Monciello. Hey! Blackwood, New Jersey. You give him a $350 gift certificate for Floating World Tattoo and Piercing. Uh, Tattoo Tuesday on our program is presented by Floating World Tattoo and Piercing, 1729 South Street in Philadelphia. Uh, for artwork samples, just visit them at floatingworldtattoos.com or go to their Instagram account at Floating World Tattoos. And take a look, and you might win next week if you didn't win this week. So try again, please. It's Pierre Robert that has joined us in the studio. Hey, ma'am. And good day to you kids. Um, is it going to rain this week? I mean, it's sort of spritzing out, but nothing is said. You guys, last week, were talking about the definition of showers right. versus drizzle versus, you know, rain. monsoon. Um, and I can't quite figure out uh, whatever is coming down is is light at best. Yeah, so it says showers today, which means that they can vary in intensity. Hmm. And then... It doesn't mean downpour. It rain, a, yeah, it means... But rain means steady rain you know right. it's constant so that's tomorrow is what they're calling for in my forecast okay and, and then thursday is showers again. all right so it's like off and on type of thing thank you all right for that clarification no problem all here, right. here to clarify sir. i yield my time yes john Belaris. <laughs> To John Blairis. <laughs> Actually, no John's very, uh, he, uh, uh, if you follow him on Twitter, he, is, is, he still dabbles in the weather, and it's a very accurate report. He's pretty spot on all the time. He, he's, I think he sells real estate now, doesn't he? He does, yeah. yes. But he um, has some, uh, he's never lost his interest in the weather. No, yeah. love, he yeah. legitimately is a weather geek. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, by the way, have you ever watched the Weather Channel? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, out in, I'm from California, and uh, my family has a house in Lake Tahoe, which just got seven feet of yeah. snow. Oh, oh, that. Oh, my uh, gosh. Seven feet. Yeah. Uh, seven to eight to nine feet, depending on the location. There was a, uh, a slope I was just reading about uh, the, the people had to, to, to get to work, and they had gotten ten feet of snow, so they had to tunnel into the, um, the business to get through the door. They had to build, and then the second floor... They open up the windows and it's right there. Right out there, yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's pretty intense out there. And um, so I, I'm always curious to, to, what, to you know, uh, exactly what's happening out there. And I'll tune into the Weather Channel. And God bless those men and women of the Weather Channel. But j just for, not that I'm a picture of sartorial splendor, <laughs> meaning fashion, but... They are among the worst dressed human beings I have ever seen. Um, the girl, the lady doing the weather had this horrible red dress and huge boots going almost up to her knees. The guy had this mismatching blazer and checkered thing going against black pants, against like tennis shoes. I'm going... Well, who let these people on the set? <laughs> I mean, and, and each one of them is worse dressed than the last one. There's this guy, Jim Cantori. He's like their main guy. And he's just, yo, fully. And he's like a, he's kind of a football, <laughs> right, right. football guy. And he, he has these plaid, non-plaid combos, plaid on plaid, <laughs> that just make me want to run screaming. Not that that makes any difference, um, but uh, it's just f kind of fascinating. And but they're all so geeky about the weather. We got a Torcon Seven coming. Right? What the hell is a Torcon Seven? <laughs> a Torcon Seven? That it's something about a tornado. Oh. Uh, but uh, they have it in you know in Torcon. <laughs> Torcon. And, and you can clearly see. And then they'll say, "Let's send it to Doctor Postel, who's not a doctor. He's got a PhD. <laughs> what do you think, Doctor?" And every time they talk to him, it's Doctor. I go. Get a goddamn stethoscope. <laughs> I mean... Why are you uh, watching if it upsets you so much? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then He's got to keep up on his family. Yeah. And talk. I try... And then they hardly ever show the West Coast. They're almost always obsessed with the East Coast or Kansas. Yeah. Uh, and tornadoes. Um, bastards. Yeah. But uh, peace and love to the weather. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about we do the letter of the day? That's my rave for the day. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. All right, the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter U, as in Uganda. All right, and we have a four-pack of tickets to see KG Elephant, special guest Young the Giant, September 16th. The four-pack of tickets to see Kings of Leon with special guest Fantagram on September 3rd. 
Uh, both shows are at The Man. KG Elephant tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, and on sale now are Kings of Leon. So you can uh, do all that at uh, through Ticketmaster or go to WMMR.com for details where we will give that away on Friday. What you doing today? Uh, what you doing today? <laughs> I like that. I want to come out and play. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Workforce Blocks of Tom Petty, of Weezer, and of Heart. And it's Double Shot Tuesday. By the way, we have the definition of Torcon. Oh, really? Yeah. Fire away. Probability of a tornado. That's oh. what a Torcon is. All right. Tor as in tornado. Okay. Con as in probability. Okay. Mm. <laughs> or we're just conning you. <laughs> yeah. That too. I right, thank you to the fine folks that bring us this radio program. The President Steve Show is brought to you by Duncan. President Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Acme Markets, fresh foods, local flavors, and Meineke Car Care. You won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Tomorrow on the program, Fox Good Day for a Wednesday. Uh, we'll do a secret text word. And, ah, Mr. Skin, the Anatomy Awards. Oh, wow. yes. Are taking place with, right of course, the Academy Awards coming up this weekend. He does the, the Anatomy Awards, so we'll check in with him. We'll see what else we can do. So that's it. We're done. Rage on. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.